yo, 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 what's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome back to Let's Chop It Up. What up, what up? What's up, what's up? Let all the people, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. So before we get started, we're missing one of our brothers. Our man yeah. Ryan is out this week. He's in Mexico, well, traveling back to Mexico after meeting with El Chapo's people to take over his organization and his cartel. <laughs> so, no, but we miss our brother Rod. He's in transit right now, and we wish he could be here. But how my brother doing? Derek, how you doing, my brother? Hey, man, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, putting in that work, man. Back on the horse. I took some time off, you know what I mean, with the workout. But I'm back on the horse. I got in the day and did my thing. I thought I, I earned a cheat day. This was right now. There's water. Maybe at the break there won't be water in here anymore. <laughs> you know how I do it. But you know, I'm feeling good. I got the kids in the room or whatever. You know, um. So you know, it's a little us time. And you know, if, since I'm not gonna see the women, uh, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers uh, in advance. Yes, yes happy um, Mother's Day. Yeah, I put in my time and did the last minute shopping today. So y'all. <laughs> you the man. You the man. You the man. Kelvin, how you doing, brother? I'm just maintaining. First of all, you know, shout out to my man Rod on his way back because we over here looking like Destiny's Child. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm just chilling. I'm I'm in New York, the home of high taxes and bad weather. Just you know, just... <laughs> and, yo, it's been raining every day, man. I'm saying for every good day we get, we get five bad ones. But yo, that's what it is in New York. We gritty like that. But I'm good, man. I'm good to see the crew, and um, I'm looking forward. We got a lot to get to tonight, so I'm ready to chop it up. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. So I'm, a, I'm out in Delaware, man. I'm in Bed, Delaware, at my sister's house, man. We celebrate my mother's 80th birthday. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday oh, mother. God, God bless you. Yep, God yep, bless you. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. So we had her birthday was Tuesday, but we celebrated today. We joined and Mother's Day because my sister's here. So we're going to celebrate Mother's Day. I'm staying out here in Delaware. So I'm in here. Hopefully the Wi-Fi doesn't go out and I have to go back upstairs and shut everybody down like I did earlier. <laughs> but, you know, but, you know, it's good times, good times. And also want to make sure everyone knows that in June, our first, uh, first this will be our last month doing Chop It Up on Saturdays. But we're moving to a Wednesday time. I think it's 9 p.m. Jamie, make sure if I'm correct, 9 p.m. time starting Wednesdays in June, because we want to go outside and party and drink and go over to Derek's house and have barbecue. June 2nd, oh, June 2nd. Oh, <laughs> the crew will be on fire, bro. Hey, listen, listen. Pent up I, energy, I'm telling I, you. I, hey, I saw your Ooh. wife last night. She told me it was an open invitation, so I'm going to take advantage. Oh, very open, very open. Everybody, yeah, all my brothers, man. Very open. Trust yeah, me, man. man. Yeah, so first up on the chopping block tonight is the Atlanta board reverses the firing of, of officer who fatally shot Rashad Brooks. You guys remember this? It was during the same time, I think, uh, the George Floyd thing in 2020. A young black brother was gunned down at a Wendy's. He was sleeping, and he got shot in the back. But they found this cop not guilty. What's your thoughts, my brothers? Man, ain't this the, this is, this is, this is the genesis of it all. This is just rinse and repeat, isn't it? You know what I mean? Um, just rinse and repeat. It's the thing where I, I, I you just feel numb after a while, man. You know, um, what are we going to do, fellas? I mean, like, what are we going to do about it? Are we going to march again? Are we going to, you know, what's the plan? You know, I'm, 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 I'm up, I'm past here. I, you know, so I, we already know that. We, I'm, don't we already know the circumstances? Don't we? How many times have we seen exactly this? You know, just you know, well, maybe not, but just various, you know, degrees of you know, different variations. Just over it, man. You know, we got to do something. But. Well, you, you know what? I think there's a blueprint that's already set, you know, and I think it's tried and it's tested, and I think we have to go for it. And you, all, you know what I always feel. I always feel that it has to be economic. Whenever there's something that's done to you, you got to make people feel it. And so I think what happens now is there's this thing about trying to lull the public to sleep. So, you know, that's why it's so important to come back and revisit things. And after, see, I think what happens, Derek, they want us to go and have rage, and then now they're willing to concede that. Okay, go ahead and vandalize some stuff. Right. Go ahead and march. Go ahead and rage. And then after that subsides and everybody's on to the next thing, then we'll, re we'll revisit it and start actually allowing people to get away with it slowly because we don't really follow up. And I think uh, for the longest, I think we've been really more uh, reactive than proactive. Right. And so I think we've got to start becoming a little more, get on the offensive side. I think we're, we're defense minded. So when somebody does something to us, then we, you know, go into this kind of attack mode. But I think we've got to keep going forward. I think we've got this idea where we vote every four years, so just the presidential 
election and things like that. But I think what we got to do is kind of keep our uh, foot on the gas. And that's, I think that's where we go wrong. Yeah, I agree with you. Like, I agree with you that like the group, uh, uh, the the gra uh, grassroots organizations and, and part of those, and like you said, local elections, we vote in your judges, and especially in states where you vote in all your judges and all that, your sheriffs and all that stuff like that. Yeah. You got to get more and more involved in that. And I think like going to the, the, the city council meetings, yeah. your, your community board meetings, your, your the educational uh, educational board meetings, and getting more involved in that and, and really putting uh, putting fire to these people. And, that's, yes, yes. and, and you know, and, and like I agree with you economically. And then if you start removing certain things, we say, okay, like I know Atlanta, we used to bring a lot of black stuff down there. We start saying, no, we're going to go to another city with this. Yep, because right. you because you don't understand what we're going through. Like this man got shot in the back, fleeing, had no weapons, and got gunned down. And this cop was getting, coming back on the, on the job. And these police unions got to be really broken up. And that's why I think people understand we're saying defund the police. I think the marketing might be wrong. We say defunding the police. It might be throw a little people off. But those resources given to the police got to be changed. It has to be changed because that's the only way. And we got to be able to attack these unions. Like, you know, go the, once you hit the unions in the pocket, they'll hire better police. Because that's it. it, it so they, it changes up the pensions and stuff like that. So we got to, I think we all got to get on board and stay on cold with that. And, I, and, don't, and don't let the next TikTok get us off. Like, ain't nobody even talking about it, really. Only a few people. Right. You know what I'm saying the next is the next TikTok thing or whatever is going on, and everybody's happy to be outside right now. You know, it's, it's, it's you know we got to put more fire to it. So I'm definitely, just, absolutely. You, when you say be, when you say be a fit, go, we have to like yeah, go on offense, man. Like you know what I mean. We mm -hmm. we have to be proactive. We can't just wait and have that same we're in that same pattern. We hear about it, everyone gets agitated. You send out your little. Uh, Facebook or social media posts about it. It circulates. Everybody gets up and roll up and you know, you get your likes or whatever it is about it. And then that's it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And everyone, I, I mean, listen, man, I don't, I, we got to do something. It's, there has to be a sustained effort, man. Yeah. It's got to, it's got to be before the next one happens. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's something that has to happen. I don't know if that, yes, politically, but, but, but there's got to be something else, man. There's got to be something else that happens, man. Right. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then ho hopefully, hopefully the change comes real soon with that. Um, the next thing is school administrators. Was having, oh yeah, yeah. School administration had to hire security because the school parents were scared. I think it was was it Rockwood? We said Rockwood, Missouri. Rockwood, Missouri. Yeah, Rock, yeah, Rockwood, Rockwood, Missouri. Because they're trying to teach bringing more diversity into the school. So basically, these I guess white people were scared that they black, they white kids are gonna learn more about the truth. And and understand other people have rights and feelings, and his parents were into uproar. Guys, your thought? <laughs> well, thought? Highest security because the truth is getting out. Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> no evidence of rioting, no evidence of fighting, no evidence of protest, but they had to hire extra security. Well, guilt is something else, man. Guilt is something else when you when you know you've done someone so wrong, and then it, it starts to be uncovered. You know, it's like almost ex excavation. Excavation. I mean, where you're un just just unearthing some things that are already there, and I think that's what's happening. I think people are paranoid. There's probably some anxiety about it. I mean, like I always say, you know, if you think about it, what happens when you realize the people that you've oppressed or done wrong figure out that there's they're stronger than you are? What happens in that position? And I mean, think about it. This is the resilient people to go through everything that people have done: genocide, slavery, everything that people try. Uh, selling you honey buns and quarter water in the neighborhood, you still, still, no vegetables, no fruit. You know, what I'm saying? I love, I love honey buns. I still love some honey buns, man. <laughs> but it was a trap. We didn't realize it. it was a trap. And them damn quarter waters. Word you know, up. Uh, yeah, doc, you know oh, what's funny? Man. But you mentioned the quarter water. I know, um, Doc. Remember Doctor D's used to come on Fox News. I mean, that Channel Five, Channel 5 News. Dr. D's report yeah, right, yeah, 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 yeah. from out of from out of Queens. I know he's the one that got rid of quarter waters. Really? I, know, wow. I met I met Dr. D's. He did quite a few things with me at, at the schools for for a few years. He got he's he might be still alive. He's got to be close to ninety something now. He's easy. But he's a good man, but he got rid of quarter waters. Really? Because so the dye in the quarter waters affected young black brains and black like more kids of color and the dye in the quarter waters. That's a, just a fun wow. fact to know about. Yeah, Dr. Hey, D's good dude. That's his contribution. Yep. Yeah, good dude, good, good, good man, good man, good man. Um, Deion Sanders was upset because we had an NFL draft a few weeks ago, right? Was it last week or a few weeks ago? Shout out to the Jets. Last Thursday. Last Thursday. My, my two Jet fans on here had a very good draft. I got to say, y'all had a very good draft. Thank you, very, sir. Thank you. Thank very, you. Very good draft. I, 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 hopefully, they'll be competitive. 
Because I love when New York teams are both competitive because it's, it's nothing like good sports radio when you're driving home. Yeah, every, every 30 or 40 so. years, we both <laughs> See, it wasn't me. It was a, 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 oh, the own Jeff fan did that tonight. I'm going to be real. Me. I just got to be real about it. <laughs> but anyhow, Deion Sanders was really upset that not one black, historical black college player got uh, picked up in this draft out of 250-something players. I forgot what this, the number is. You guys, thoughts on that? I'm, I'm at, I think we're having an issue now with HBCUs now anyway. They're kind of under fire a little bit with funding and everything, as I, as I kind of heard. I, I, didn't, I did not have the pleasure of attending one, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But um, but I believe that's what I heard. And it seems like, um, I don't know, man, maybe some of the, maybe some of these, uh, so some of the students are making business decisions, you know, not going into the HBCUs in the first place. So who's actually planning there that's, NFL worthy, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, so I mean, I, I, yeah, yeah, I'm not familiar with the players. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So here, here go my issue with that is that the the colleges, I mean, the college, sorry, the NFL are not going to even to see these these kids. Like, for instance, in Florida, say Florida A and M, they have to go down the block and try to get somebody to come. And some of the some of the scouts will only bring maybe one or two people come to see these historical black college players. Now. We have some dynamic historical black college players. If I'm going to mention Jerry Rice, Harry oh, Carson, yeah. you know, yeah. I got to go, uh, uh, Shannon Sharp. You know, we, I'm yeah. talking about Hall of Fame caliber of players. Oh, yeah. Steve yeah. McNair, God bless the dead Steve McNair. You know, uh, it, it's just a shame that they never even come to look at our players. But I like right. the move that, you know, and now you got Deion Sanders or people like that's going to bring light to the historical black college. You got uh, Eddie George that went out to, um, Oh, man, I forgot the name of the school he went to. He's gonna he's he's gonna he's gonna be the coach there at the school. Uh, heck, what is the school? I can't even think of the name of the school right now. But anyhow, but hopefully, but I think it's a shame that they didn't even come and look at the place. Or get you know, yeah. so, so that's what I, that's, that's but my I think this is the thing. You know, wherever you have leverage, you have to have to use it. The NFL is about seventy five to eighty percent black. The star athletes in the NFL have to be the ones to use their leverage. They have got to be the voice. People are not going to give you something because it's right. They're yep. only going to give it to you because they have no choice. Right. And so as a result, the, the NFL players need to say, look, I want you to start doing things for my alma mater. I want you to start recognizing. I want you to start acknowledging the fact that, talent, that, that there's talent there. Everybody's not going to go to Ohio State. Everybody's not going to go to USC. And so they've got to lean on them. And, and and listen, you do that when you get to that podium uh, at the Super Bowl. You do that when you're uh, dealing with the international press. You start making noise about things and you start knocking down doors. And if, do if the door doesn't open, then you create a new door. And that's what we've got to do. I think that's the reality of it because they're not going to go. And they basically look at the black colleges like a minor league system. Yeah. And yeah. it's not, and, and, and they don't look at it as as, as it's one that feeds the NFL. They don't, so they're making you conform to go to these schools, and then they say that these schools are the standard. You know what I'm mm. saying? And so we've got to we've got to really start. You got to you, you got to. Unfortunately, nothing is given to us. That's why so many people was afraid of the COVID shot because it was free. Nothing. <laughs> no, really, really. That's nothing, true. That's true. That is nothing true. is ever given to us. So when something yeah. is, we question it. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. You're very true. Yeah. yeah. You're right. And, and, and you're right. It's like, I'm just so sick when I have the argument with certain black people and it's about, well, Ohio State have this, this kind of gymnasium. Now Ohio State has this kind of equipment. They can give my kids, my child this. But I'll keep trying to tell them, only reason Ohio State has those, that kind of gymnasium and gyms because it's off of black talent. Think about yeah. it. If we took that same talent, the Coca-Colas will come over to uh, the, the Virginia unions. I'm just using your school uh, ex <laughs> <laughs> I know how you... I, I, you only went there. You only went there for a short period of time. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I just want to use that as an example. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I think you, I think you answered the question just now, though, man. I mean, a lot of these students are making business decisions, man. They're going to where the scouts are going are going to visit. You know what I mean? The the Ohio States, you know, the Michigans. They are they are you know NFL factories, you know, and that's where they're going. Yes, the star athletes are still black. You know what I mean? But they're just not going to HBCUs. They're great right. places, yeah. you know? But yeah. it's, it's almost like, it's, to me, it's almost like people got to realize, like when St. John's, let's use St. John's as an example, right? 
St. John's, when they had the best basketball talent back in the 80s, right? When you're talking about was Mark Jackson, you're talking about Walter oh, Berry, yeah. and all that stuff. So, Ooh. so all those guys, nice. you know, uh, Chris Mullins. The reason I had that talent, because back then, St. John's didn't have dorms, right? So the players then go, uh, the best players that they, their parents got the rent paid for the school so they could commute every day from home. So once mm. you took, once they built the dorms, and then they pay that, the parents are like, oh, I can send them to Tennessee. Tennessee might give, you know, send them here for a bag or whatever, you know, the booster, yeah. right? you know what I'm saying? Allegedly, <laughs> you know, those kind of things going, you know, and that's what happens. So in the historical black, so same thing, the historical black college, we could just keep the, the best talent, the best ball handles in New York. Let's keep it a block right. back in the day. I don't know about now, but back in our day it was, right? right. We could have kept that, you know, local talent until Hunter College could have went to a St. Right. John's, you know, but they all went elsewhere. So the thing with the black, the black athletes are so dope especially in football and basketball, if they just stayed home. But we've seen that with, with some of these other athletes uh, coming out. We're going to talk about that in like a couple of seconds. I know, Kevin, you're about to say something. No, I mean, I, I absolutely agree with you. I mean, the, the, the reality of it is, and I learned this early on, going to, I, I, I went to a Virginia Union University early on, and what happens is the funding is just not there. People do not, you know, see, that's the whole thing with this. We're never on an equal playing field. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And so, you know, a lot of schools rely on uh, alumni donations and things like that. The federal government right. was not giving a lot to these schools and all that stuff. And so as a result, you know, some people would go there because they didn't have their grades right or they the, the school would extend an olive branch to them and things like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, these NFL teams and owners and GMs, they owe it to these schools just to give them a chance. See, and I always say this about people. When you hear people talk about equality, you've got to ask yourself, do people really want equality? People would like equality if it doesn't cost them something. And the reality of it is it will cost something. And some people feel like if I give you something, then it's going to be less for me. And that's what I see all the time. There's a lot of people that want society in this country to stay exactly where mm -hmm. it is. Right. And if the goalpost moves slightly, there's, it's always panic. That's what we saw on January 6th. Where, where people are afraid of what's coming. So what I realized, and I've always been taught this, and I think we, we've learned it from, from Malcolm X, by any means necessary, if nobody's going to help you, do it yourself. Mm -hmm. And we've got, but the, the question is, are we willing to sacrifice? So so are, are black kids, and D, you make a good point. If these black kids said, I'm not going to these major programs, and I'm going to all black schools, they would come there. They're going to follow. They're going to follow yeah. the talent. They're going to follow the talent, because whoever's going to be had the hot basketball player and all the kids gonna want uh follow you know see where sneakers they're gonna follow they're gonna follow like the, the Nike will follow right to that spot. But since we're on that topic, Sha uh, Shaquille O'Neal's son, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Derek, you remember how his, his name's pronounced? Shakira. Shakira, Shakira, I believe. Yeah, Shakira. Yeah. yeah, he's another one of the celebrity athletes that kids are joining out going to historical black colleges. I think his son has enrolled into Texas Southern University. I think um uh what's gonna call it uh, Strahan. Did Michael Strahan go to Texas Southern? I think he was a Texas Southern University oh, okay. too. Yeah, so so I'm glad that Shaq, and maybe Shaq, his son, will bring on some light to see now of what some of these kids going on to. So but hopefully, dude, a lot see, of D, D, I'm sorry to cut you. That that that's, that makes my point. In other words, Shaq's son can afford to do that. Right. Shaq's son is is a millionaire already. He don't have to be yeah. a Pro Bowl player. He don't have to whatever. He don't have to graduate college. He's he's right. gonna be rich yeah. for the rest of his life. And yeah. so yeah. what happens is the other kids in the situation, nobody from the historical black college. He come and slip you some money under the table. You know what I'm saying? Like, like literally, it's nothing they can really offer. You they, know what I mean? Slip, they slip me a fake ten dollar bill. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. They don't have the facilities. They don't have the facilities. I mean, Virginia Union University. We had toilets. We just ain't had no dividers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm, I'm not exactly. I am not exaggerating. <laughs> I am not exaggerating. People was leaving there like, forget it. I'm just gonna go to jail. I just can look better than this. Like, I mean, you know. And so, but I'm glad. I'm glad Shaq. One thing Shaq's son does bring, he brings notoriety, and yeah. that means Shaq will be at these games, and yeah. that means that you'll get some attention and things like that. And so that's very, very important. You Shout know. Out to him, man. Shout yeah, out to yeah. him making a socially responsible decision. You know what I mean with regard to where he's going to get an education. Number one. But also the light that he's bringing to you know to the schools and to HBCUs is a wonderful thing. To see. We need a different world back, y'all. We need we a do. different world back. We need. We let me tell you something. I'm gonna tell you honestly, D. I did not know anything about historically black colleges until school days came up. 
Mm. They said I didn't know anything about it until school days. That's, 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 that is that I can say that I, I might be in a long. I can't remember back then, but you might be right. I didn't start learning about more. I didn't know about the 115 at the time. Like, right, that's, that's about, what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know about like those kind of things. I didn't know the history of of Cheney University. I didn't know you know Lincoln University. Those kind of things. I didn't know about those schools that were so close to our New York area at the time. You know, so I I, I totally agree with you on that school day. Right. Think about it, they said oh, historical black college was overcrowded back then. And they said mm-hmm. that's about the, when 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 that came out and Dwayne Wayne said he wanted to be an engineer. They said they had more black kids, men trying to register to become engineers because of Dwayne Wade. Dwayne wow. Wade, Dwayne right. Wayne. Right, yeah, right, yeah. right. And, and, yeah. I mean, you know, think about it. If you watch Def Comedy Jam, Martin was always wearing Hampton shirts. And all the all the, ra- all the rappers did. Everybody wore those the, things. The black and the berry, I mean, no, the black and the college is sweeter than Alice shirt. Right, all and of that. You know, so yeah. those things were really, really good. And then at the same time. You had a, a, a lot of black filmmakers coming up. You had Maddie Rich, you had Spike Lee, you had yeah. these guys, I think Singleton came on the scene. You started having these guys pop up. And somewhere along the line, somewhere mid to late 90s, it just shifted. It was a yeah. paradigm shift and it all went away as fast as it showed up. Yeah, and that affected us. They, they got rid of the budgets on that and they went to reality shows that were cheaper to make and they, and they, sell, they started selling trauma and drama. Right. Yeah, you go. so that yeah, that's yeah. so you know, like I'm gonna get on next week. Oh, we're gonna talk about Tamron Hall, and I'll tell you about that. Her trauma ass, but um, that's I'm not gonna bring that because I know Jamie they like he like that kind of chick, but I, I'm gonna speak on it. But anyhow, since we're on the topic of kind of money stuff, Jay Z completed the sale of title to Jack Dorsey for, of Square to report a $350 million. So, once again, we build up a business, a black business, well, I don't say black business, but black ownership, and we sell it. So what are you guys' thoughts on it? Man, I wish Rodney, you knew Rodney was here. We have a real... <laughs> no, no, no. Me and Derek are about to go at it. We yeah, already know man. it. Hey, look, hey, look. hey, Derek, you take that light skin roll and you go <laughs> with Rodney. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. All right, look, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. I understand. I just don't agree. I just don't see how it works long time, long term. Because what happens is this. Whenever somebody is willing to pay you for something, it's worth more to them. That's just the bottom line. It's just worth more to them. And so what I'm saying is if we continue to sell businesses that we create, that we cultivate, if we continue to do that, we will never operate or own any industry. And that's the problem. We don't own industry. So I remember Jay-Z making sure that title was going to be different. It was going to give all the artists a percentage of their own masters and all these different things. And it was about trying to get away from these controlling labels and to build it up on the strength. Of, I mean, I knew people, my nephew included, who were like, I'm going to support title because it's black owned. I'm going to pay more for this subscription than Apple Music. And I'm going to, no matter what, I'm going to do it. Now, all these people invest and they put money in it and then you sell it. And, and what about them? So what was it worth my nephew doing that for? He, he actually paid more to be a part of that, to support it, because he felt it was Black-owned. So now, now what happens to those people that support it? We looked at the same thing with FUBU. FUBU, for us, by us, until it was sold to, you know, it, Chinese people or yeah. Asian people. It was just, yeah. So when, what is the purpose of that? So you get everybody Black to rally around you, help build it up in the equity, then you sell it. Yeah, you know, for these, these this FUBU, FUBU was sold uh, to a corporation. Def Jam, I mean? Def yeah. Jam, corporation, you know, Def Jam, corporation. Def Jam, has, Def Jam hasn't been the same. Just yeah, keep it a buck. But corporation, if you want to own Def Jam, go out and buy the stock. You know what I mean? That's just kind of where it's at. It's a nameless, faceless corporation. There's soulless. There's no one person that owns it. You know what but I mean? The, I know, but the thing I think what Kelvin's saying, like now with title, at least you had Jay-Z thinking about fighting for some of the rights for these artists now. What what happens to these artists now that so they bought into they I'm gonna rock put my music only on title and now mm-hmm. would they get this now would they turn to yeah. be like, like get treated like you know yeah. I, Man, it, 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 it's messed up. Yeah, you're right. But you know but, what? But, that's, but that's why I say when people say they ride for the culture and they ride for this, then like damn you rolled me, rolled me, then you just kick me off the bus. <laughs> right, right. <And> that's, <laughs> that's, 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 but see, at some point, man, we gotta accept that that's the way business operates. It's man. business. You know what what I mean? like, that's just the way it's never gonna change, man. The the object, the point of business is to make money. You know what I mean? And what's gonna happen is he owns it. 
you got it's a personal decision, man. He built it up. And Derek, what to do? He Derek, sold it. I can't, I can't be down. First of all, there's work at the post office. There's work at the post office. For secondly, <laughs> secondly, this is this is my point. When you are a billionaire already, see that's what gets me. You know yeah, what I'm saying? It, yeah, that's good. how you became a billionaire. That's yeah, right. But what I'm saying, at what point do you say, okay, so let me actually just give back and help create industry for other people? He why? Why? That. He can do that. Now he's got more time. He doesn't have to be right. He doesn't have to be actively involved in title. He's just going to sit back. He's got a, a big stack of cash. He's probably getting a percentage of everything, still getting some residual. Wait, so and now so, he can work on something else. I don't know. You know so it was title that was taking up Jay-Z's time. Jay-Z was in that office every day. I mean, come he on. Got one less thing to do. He got See. one less thing to pay attention. See, let me tell you. Let me tell you something. It looked like from a music standpoint, he got freed up time. I mean, he ain't like he doing what he was doing before. I'm saying that's probably what he wanted to do. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying at the end of the day, man, you know, same thing with Bob Johnson. Bob Johnson sells BET for a billion dollars and then buys a basketball team. You know what I'm saying? Oh, BT, though. BT was trash, man. I'm just going to go call it, man. Well, that back, well, back in the day, wasn't that back in the day when they had Ed, uh, Ed Gordon, no shows like that? Right. Yeah, oh, then, oh, 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 yeah, but then after what was, you know, the booty videos and all of that. Well, when did that come? When did that start? When one, they took Ed Gordon them off, you know. Yep, yep. You know what I mean? On, yeah, no, that, that, yeah that, that's when, no. When, they, when you saw the part when they had the booty <laughs> stuff in there. Yeah, that's Brad, 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 yeah, that's right, Brad. Word up, word, the word. You say, yeah. Yeah, like, so yeah. yeah, that, yeah, you're right. He probably would, and that was, and that's, and why did yeah. that happen? Why but, would black people sell other black people? Because but, you see, and that's what I'm saying. But see, what, what I'm saying is this. In other words, yeah. then, then, then state what the intention is. Stop on this whole fight the power and, and black solidarity, and then when somebody offer that check, it all changes. That's what I'm <laughs> saying. Words, what I'm saying is this. In other words, at the end of the day, we allow ourselves to be exploited. We create hip hop, then we sell it. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And if we don't sell it, somebody comes and takes it. You create beats headphones, then somebody takes it. You create title, then somebody takes it. Google, then somebody takes it. BT, then somebody takes it. What do you do? And what do we have? What do we have to show for it? No, what do we nobody, have to show for it? That seven to eight people it. became billionaires? We didn't have nothing to show for it from the get go because we didn't own title. We didn't own B. Well, the, the, I, the, oh, right, but I agree. I agree. I agree. How did Drake? But how did he build beats? Because we bought it. Yeah, yeah. and we yeah. still buy it. You know what I'm saying? Not, not we. Not this is Sony right here. This is yeah. budget. This is twenty dollars. <laughs> I'm on the minimum wage, brother. You know what I'm saying? Be beats. I put beats on L sound no better than nothing else to me. I'm just being honest. Don't. For real. Beats be yeah. Yeah. You got to yeah. go. You gonna go ahead, Bose, you, go with, you gotta go. You gotta go with bows. You don't see the NFL outside in the rain wearing no beats. They wear bows. You should go sign houses. <laughs> yeah, but but that but I, it was something you said. It was um. Oh yeah, oh, back in the BT. BT, it was good black television. Once it got sold to corporate America, that's when you started seeing the stitch slid down the butts of back of black uh, the credit cards down the back of a black woman's <laughs> backside. They went Viacom brought it up, so you know that's that's and we, that's, and we that's, were still watching. And we were still watching, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we watch because sex sells, but yeah, then the exactly. programming, then, then the daytime programming got trashed. When you took off Teen Summit, the what first thing you did take off Teen Summit, Brooklyn Teen Summit, uh, 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 yep. nightly news, right? Right? <laughs> yep. BT yep. nightly, yep. nightly news. Yep. You like nightly news. Yep. Because what I'm saying is, how many times does the carrot have to go in front of our face? How many times does the carrot have to go in front of our face? That and this is my point to you, Derek. We That's can't afford. Right. We can't afford to do business like everybody else. No, you right. just afford, We don't have enough equity. Listen, you are right. I'm agreeing with you. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. They, we ain't doing it. He's doing it, right? And it's hard, it's easy for us to come around and say, listen, we're going to do it for the culture. But we're not making the same decisions that that person made that got him there in the first place. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I'm going to say this no. tonight, and y'all can sit there and get mad at me if you yeah, want. Black, I am sick, I'm I'm sick of black people talking about for the culture. What is the culture? <laughs> <laughs> what, tell me, who, who owns the culture? What, I want somebody explain to me. Somebody you, right on the bottom. You're making my point right now. You're making my point right now. Yeah. Well, no, but also, no. But see, my problem is that I understand your point. But you can't preach that as Jay-Z when it's coming out. But yeah, we don't own it. But he's talking about, I'm making sure the artists get this. I had a conversation with Prince. All the stuff you're talking about right. for the artists. And right. now it's sold to this white man who's probably going to rip off 
the artist. Exactly. <laughs> so how would you exactly. safeguard it? The artist, when right. you say, okay, everybody come to me. I built this platform. You guys come to me. I got all your music. I'm getting a lot of money of it. I'm giving you some money, but now I'm going to sell it. Now y'all going to get fucked, there and I'm go. out of here. That's it. That's, That's my it. problem with it. That's the thing. And so I'm saying, <laughs> when, when you present it like that, yeah. on some old solidarity, that's what gets me. In other words, at what point do we ever have anything? Yeah. Nothing. It was, all, it was all branding, brother. It was all welcome to yeah, the it, 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 it was bait and switch to me. I never yeah, bought title. Branding. I never got title. But it seemed like it was bait and switch. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I ain't buying. I still got CDs. I don't even know about streaming. <laughs> <laughs> she said, we didn't have anything to do with decisions being made. That's right. No, we understand we. that. Derek, Derek, <laughs> we are, Derek. Stop trying to send your wife to come for us. I know what she's doing. I know exactly what she's doing. I know exactly what she's doing. <laughs> I know exactly what she's doing. Go ahead. Go ahead. Last, you want to say last words on this, Kevin? Before, yes. Before yes. I, I, let, me, let me tell you something on the, on the real. If anybody, if anybody that I know gets successful or on their way up, I'm going to I'm gonna support you. Dead serious. But I'm saying if I do that, Make sure that we're doing it based on trying to build something for ourselves. We we have to do that at a certain point. No. And I get your point, Derek. I do get your point. And Kevin, look what Brad and look what Brad wrote for the culture. Our culture is <laughs> all that goes into the beats, styles, themes, melodies of the music leading to their profit. Yeah. Yes. Let me right. say something. Yo, right. yo, Brad, you gotta come on. You gotta come back right. on. I know, man. I didn't know if he was busy. He was running around. Or I was gonna say that, but I thought that's he was what I'm saying. Around. But he's right. He's absolutely right. And, and the the problem is they know it. That's the yeah. thing. They know it. They will sit right. there. And, I mean, I went to Israel and saw little Jewish kids running around with Fubu hats. I remember when Fubu was a, a little table on on farmers in Liberty in Queens, and yeah. now over the other side of the world, the kid, anything we do. People take it and exploit it, and we allow them to do it. So the question is, what is your price? Do you have yeah. a price? Yeah, obviously, yeah. Jay Z got a f- price. It's three hundred fifty million dollars. Right, and that's what I'm saying. <laughs> and it's foul. To me, that's just foul. That's, that's it. To me, it's three hundred fifty million dollars. It's unfortunate to me, but it's three hundred fifty million dollars. But I mean, look, it's three hundred fifty million dollars <laughs> that he still ain't gonna spend in his lifetime. Yeah, but maybe he'll do something with it though. Maybe he'll now. Oh yeah, now, 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 maybe, now he's gonna, right maybe now he'll, he'll start a black maybe business, he'll right? Maybe he'll support some of these HBCUs, for instance, man. Maybe he'll start doing something like that with his money. Man. I don't know. Yeah, the press of slave mentality is more deep ingrained than most of us realize and will admit. Exactly. You know oh, what I'm saying? Oh, okay. I just got to say this. I just got yeah. some news. I just got some yeah. news. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Baysmores are shareholders <laughs> in China. I just, oh, okay, now I see, okay, got you. <laughs> she make, she's making cake and cake it yeah, up on China. Right, right, right. <laughs> making cake both ways. Making both hey, ways. Literally cake lane. and figuratively cake. <laughs> Oh man, I'm gonna move to another section because Jamie's Jamie's over here. Oh, so a South Carolina fire chief has been placed on administrative leave after writing a racial charge Facebook post urging cops to stop responding to calls from black new neighbors. Thoughts? <laughs> I just saw that Tuesday. <laughs> I mean, I, you know? I mean that, that, that's it. I mean, it, it, it's, I just, that's why I said I try to push this early on. Let's have a anti-racism day where we're gonna give racists a day off. Just one day. You know how sometimes you know how they do the, the environment in Manhattan? They try to just turn the lights down just yeah. one day, Earth Day, where they just let the earth just cool off, right? Let's have just one day where all the racists can chill. We could drive our car, not be harassed, go to the store, and not be following around. Because you think about the energy it takes for them to do that. You gotta follow us around. Then you gotta cross over. You know what I'm saying? You gotta be suspicious. <laughs> gotta just, no racial slurs or anything that one yeah. thing. Because to me, this is not news. This is the usual. This yeah. is the norm. That is just yeah. it. The thing that amazes me about prejudice and racism is it doesn't dissipate. It does not dissipate. Let me tell you something. I watch men walk down the street holding hands. Nobody blinks. That's it. You know why? Because that community fought to make sure if you look at them twice, they will shut your business down. That's yeah, it. Yeah. I'm telling you, you can still shoot an unarmed black man like it's nothing. You know what I'm saying? No. And don't even yeah. worry about it. There is no repercussion mm-hmm. to it. And I'm saying at this point, it has never dissipated. 
it is still just as prevalent. I was just in North Carolina Tuesday and saw a mural with people, slaves picking cotton on it in a town. <laughs> a bad. mural that That's somebody bad. paid a mural to paint somebody picking cotton. It had the Dang. nerve to be where they pick cotton at, right next to it. <laughs> and the black people there did not have a problem with it. Wow. They, they, didn't feed it. they got tired too, man. They just fed it. They just tired of feeding into it, man. That's, I they, feel like they're numb too. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they might be in get out. You might have been in a town with a whole bunch of get out. Yeah, right around there. They yeah. almost must have heard the tea and got messed up with the tea. That's right. Yeah, yeah man. My father said, they, they may not like you, but you got to make them respect you. You got to feel it. That's it. You got to yeah. feel it. Black but, America but needs a jab. We don't have a jab. It's, it's so dangerous when you have somebody like that with power. Yeah, like a, like a, your life might depend on him showing up to your neighbor to stop a fire, you know, or a heart attack, or you get uh, the jaws of life, and he's like, ah, we'll get there when we get there. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of it's dangerous when you look at it like that. That these people are the people that are supposed to save lives and, and have safety. Yeah, and with, that's the way with, they feel about D, it. I'm gonna be honest with you, and I, I gotta say this: I know a lot of black men in particular that do not get involved in anything civic anything in their community, anything will not register to vote, will not, I mean, will not be involved in the process. So what happens is the chips always fall where they may. There's no repercussion to it. Nobody even considers backlash from our community. That's just it. And like I said, we are very, very reactive. And, and, I, and I, I blame our community in some regards too. I'm driving down the street. I see a million young black men with ATVs just driving up and down at Fights oh, and all sorts of that. Damn. If somebody get hit, if somebody get hit, here come their mother. This is not right. They need to put a stop yeah. up. They in other words, we never do things. Even back then, I remember Russell Simmons did this big thing about the Rockefeller law. Remember how they were yep. unfair, right? Yep. Now I remember Russell going to City Hall. I remember big campaigns. I do not remember from our community the same campaign about stopping our young men selling drugs. I remember I, in the I, 80s and 90s. I, I do not I, remember the same I, token. No. We <laughs> made they, songs they, about they, everything. You know, they, had, they had a few things. So, uh, this is so funny like, just, that you say that. Because they have these marches with these mothers that right now that are going on about the gun violence. They don't get as much attention. Right now, let's look at the, the, the shooting right. with the brother down in Elizabeth, North Carolina. There have been no breaking of no properties, no no windows, no other stuff that. No media has come down to cover that. They're not, they, can't get from, they, can't get me, they can't get media from Charlotte, Raleigh, anything. If it was the only thing they want, if they have black people doing something crazy, every camera, news camera from Baltimore to wherever is no going doubt. to show up. No doubt. Well, we can't cover it because we don't own a network anymore because we got a, the Charlotte Bobcats we, 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 on. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we can't. We don't have our own media. Really. Touche, Kelvin. Lord, Lord Edison said you got to get your own media. He said yep. because if not, you can't tell your story. The next thing is this. What I'm saying is, D, you remember in the 90s, Go down Guy Brewer, every corner store, six to seven young black men selling drugs. And nobody said nothing. You got a yeah. thousand hardworking homeowners in the block. Seven young men held them hostage, standing at the store selling drugs. What I'm saying is, and, and, and yeah, there's reasons they were out there, but we didn't see the same outrage for that. And we've got to do that too. That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? But then when somebody, when something else happens, we go off. We got to do it because we're going to have to take it out of our community because nobody else wants it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think they hold other communities accountable yeah, for disrespecting yeah. this community. Yeah, I think we were, uh, those errors, like that, I told people the 80s and 90s was a selfish generation. People, we were all selfish. Like even the people, because some of them old people that was going through, like, some people, the old people that were going through the hard times of getting past those young men that was out there hustling like that, some some of the other old people were benefiting from the young men hustling like that. Yeah. Right. right. So yeah. it's like you know. So it was. It was. Right. It was a hard it's, time. It's, it was, right. It was very selfish. It was very it's selfish. But I have seen people. D. I have seen sons go out there sell drugs for their family, and then when they get them numbers, twenty years and twelve years and fifteen years, which was unfair. But what I'm saying is, we only talked about it on the back end. I actually watched one mother sit there and watch her son every week come home with new stuff and know that boy ain't have a job. And then he got arrested for drug trafficking and had to do 12 years. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And we've got to say something then, but we don't say anything. But that's a different issue. To your point about the fire chief, what I'm saying is, again, this is going to keep happening until you give them a reason to stop. And that's just it. And it, 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 if there's no recourse, then that's it. Yeah. Well, another topic. On more racial news, 
a black man was enslaved by a white man that should, that should have received five hundred thousand in restitution. The courts well, say should have received five hundred thousand in restitution. This happened, I think, in Myrtle Beach or Conway, somewhere in, the, in, in South Carolina, yeah. where this white man had a restaurant had this man that it was uh it was mentally challenged. And he took advantage of him and kept him away from his friends, his family, and made him work for free. I think it was like 15 hour days. And when he found, when they finally got the man charged, he, the first time they ruled that he was getting 250,000, the judge said that was too much, too low and gave him, awarded this man $500,000. Yeah, yeah. You know, modern day slavery. So any thoughts in? Yeah, I think it was actually, I, I don't know. I, I think you're right on that, D. I, I think it was, it was, he was given one award, then uh, they went for another award, and that, then that got knocked down, but then they appealed it. And then the appeal, on the appeal, they said that you should have given them double. They gave them double. So, yeah, it came out to about 500000 But, yeah, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. on the grounds of uh, they didn't consider what he would have done with the money had he gotten it on time. There's an opportunity cost of money. And that's the whole thing about slavery in general. You know what I mean? The opportunity cost the law. It's not just the lost wages. And this is what this is, slavery. This is slavery. All right? So, you didn't get paid. What would you have done with that money when you had you gotten it on time? Would you have invested it? How would it have changed your life? You know what I mean? Um, and that's and I think it speaks to to the larger uh, issue of slavery of, of us historically. You know what I mean? What would we have done had we gotten all had our people had been paid on time? You know, would we have the same issues that we have now? No. Um, you know, what, how would our lives been have, uh, have been changed? And I find it interesting, too, because dare I say um, this might be maybe a case for reparations. You know what I mean? We could kind of use this maybe and just and, and, and kind of figure it out maybe economically uh, what it would take. Maybe it's not money for reparations. You know, uh, maybe it's not a check. I don't think a check does it. But what could we use in the reparations argument? What can we take from this and push forward into the law? Hey, just, just the thing, though. You know what I'm starting to think? I'm starting to think reparations is the unicorn. It's the unicorn that never shows up. It's the unicorn, mm -hmm. but but what it is, we constantly chase it. So what I think we're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to give yourself reparations by stop buying Louis Vuitton, by stop buying Gucci, yeah. by stop, in other words, oh. take that crap and make it your own reparations. That's what we're gonna have to do. Yeah. Literally, we're gonna have to do that. I mean, somewhere along the line, the bottom line is this. We have an era now where we don't want to sacrifice because we're we're comfortable. Yeah. We're just we're just more comfortable. So what happens is it's very, very smart. It's a tactic. Let people get a little advancement so they think they've overcome stuff and then lull them to sleep. And that's, I think, what has happened. You see what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, Derek, it, the fact that we keep asking for reparations, we're still saying the system that has oppressed us and broken us, now could you help us? And it just yeah. doesn't make sense. Logically, it doesn't. Right. It just doesn't make sense. The day right. they give black people reparations, you're gonna hear the news. The, the, they no longer use the dollar. The dollar right. is worthless. I mean, you no, know what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, that's just what it is. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I realized that at this stage in my life, that they're not going to give us anything. I'll tell you this. I'm gonna share this story, and and if people don't like it, they just don't like it. I was in a diner. I never forget it. The flagship diner on Queens Boulevard in Queens, New York. And I'm sitting there talking to a friend of mine and we're talking about an issue in the paper. This white man who I did not know sitting behind me, he turns around and I'm quoting this man. OK, this man says, I see why Muslims think white men are the devil. This is a white man that told me that he said that he see. That's what he said. I didn't I didn't know who the man was. He overheard us talking. He turns around and says that you see what I'm saying he felt that way. In other words, at the end of the day, we already know what this is. The playbook hasn't changed. You yeah. know, they play yeah. and, I, and yeah. I, I agree. I agree with, with Mrs. Baysmore. They're That's not right. giving us anything. <laughs> no, 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 never. No, they're, not, no. They're, they're not gonna give it to you because again, in other words, first of all, it's an admission of wrongdoing. That's the first thing. So nobody's gonna admit that. That they don't want to admit that. You you just talked about how they don't even want their kids learning the truth about what they did. <laughs> And think about it like this. Look how long it took them for just to get the survey, a study. It just yeah. got approved this year. <laughs> I yeah. mean, it's, 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 and all that right? stuff is window dressing. Yeah. It's all window dressing. It is yeah. all made to just appease you. Yeah. That's that's what it is. You know what I mean? That's what it is. And so at, at this stage, we've got to start our own building blocks. And that's why I think, Derek, the first thing economically. I don't care what, I don't care if we got two nickels 
to get, hold it together. Right. Just keep it. Just sit on it. That's your only leverage. That's it to take what you right. have. That's all we can do. Yeah, really. No, I hear you on that, man. Yeah, so, I mean, go ahead, there. Sorry, he's, no, no, no. Oh, I was oh, just saying, oh. I, I was agreeing with Kelvin on that. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Go ahead. Yeah, so um, the brother that played, um, um, um. What's him call it? Um, Fred Hampton. I almost lost my train. I was about to say Black Panther, but he was in Black Panther. Almost got mixed up. He said recently, I forgot what his whole name is. So what's his name again? I forgot his brother's name. Anyway, he said that um, he's tired of talking about racism. So we had our brother, Doctor Umar, respond to him saying he's tired of talking about racism. He just want to be uh, called by his name. He don't want to talk about nothing else. Jamie, can you please play the video? Now you're playing one of the premier revolutionary black freedom fighters in American African history and you get asked a question about racism and race and instead of answering it in support of the people whose hero you playing, you backed off of it. You cowered out of the question, Daniel Kaluuya. And if you want to defend him, go ahead. But he cooned out and I'm going to call it out. He cooned out, and I'm going to call it out. He was asked about race and racism, and he said, why do we have to talk about this? And then he said, I'm Daniel, who just happens to be black. Any uh, thoughts? I, 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 listen, <laughs> my, thing, my thing is I agree with Umar on this. And Umar can say some off-brand stuff sometimes, but you know, I agree with him a lot, a lot of things and some things I don't. My thing is you can't keep playing, taking all these black roles. You take Fred Hampton. Come on, man. That's a revolutionary brother if you can't. You be in Black Panther. You was in Get Out. He did something else. I forgot another one joint he did. Like, you can't take these roles and say, I'm tired of talking about race. Then you don't should talk about, then don't take roles about race. You're going to be, you're going to be always looked upon but as a Derek, person to discuss that. Derek, indeed, this is the reality of it. Dudes have an allegiance to who's paying them. Yeah, they Queen of Slim, right, that's right, Queen they, of Slim. Yeah, they right, they right, got right. an allegiance to who's paying them. That's what it is. In other words, they do not want to rock the boat. I remember Lauren Hill had um, a line in the miseducation. She said, the ones on top won't make it stop, afraid that they may fall. And that's just the bottom line. In other words, my man is in Hollywood. He's making that money. He came from overseas, right? Came from over the pond. Yeah, yeah. Making yeah. that money. And so there's already just a detachment from the American black plight right there, probably. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And so the, the best way, and so in his mind, he's probably thinking, I'm just going to kind of, you know, deviate from the question mm -hmm. so I don't mm -hmm. be considered a sellout. Mm -hmm. When you mm -hmm. don't feel that question, when you don't feel that question, you already sold out. You already yeah. did. I do agree with Umar Johnson with that. He just did. And, and and I'm saying because he knows if you upset the wrong people, tomorrow your career could be shut down. And, yeah, and no. again, you're not willing to take that risk. Yeah, no, you just said it, Kelvin. He's he a lot of it is he's coming from he's coming from another country. He's coming from England, and he's more of a blank slate. You know what I mean? He gets here, they can just kind of write on yep. what what they need him to do, and he'll just get along because you know, he doesn't, he's not necessarily attached to the black American experience, but he is a bit of more, or at least as attached uh, to that paycheck. You know what I mean? Who's promoting him? Who's, who brought him all the way from over here, there to here to make him a star? Now, Derek, if you ask him how he feel about cruelty to animals, man would go off. Oh. Oh, that's right. That's right. No. That's no. Right. That's right. No. There you go. There you and go. For the, Brad said that we got a little private chat going on. We're going to explain with Brad. Brad said the difference in experience, UK blacks have a different experience of slavery because of the bondage took place out of, outside of the Caribbean. That's true. I think they do have a different uh, perspective on how, how we were treated compared to them. And I think he's just, like you said, I think you both said, I think he's trying to line up his next paycheck. Oh, no, no, no question. The people have this selective amnesia. You know, people research everything when they need to. When You know, if it's a role, my man could play a, a slave in Africa if he needed to. But at the end of the day, he's not going to rock the boat. And, you know, mm -hmm. ask yourself if you really think about it. All of us, ask yourself if you really have a price. If you really have a price, honestly, if, if somebody really could, if there's a certain amount of money that would just get you to be like, you know what, I'm just going to abandon my morals or, or my, my moral compass and say, yo, I'll take the money. Really? All, all, all you can eat cracker barrel pancakes. 
<laughs> you know what? We can't even stop talking about man. Derek, Derek like DJ set cool. us back. DJ yeah. set us back. But yo, I mean, we're talking about for life. Because it's a, it's a, it's a good, it's a good question. It's a good question. So this is all right. So, so let's let's think about when we talk about the issue about whether you would sell what you had, right? This is the fear. This is always the fear. You come up with something. You're going to either you're going to sell it to me, or I'm going to duplicate it and do it better because I got more resources than you. That's what it is. You look at, and I remember making the statement that Dick Clark offered Don Cornelius money to buy Soul Train, and Don Cornelius refused to sell it to him. But here, but but here's the thing. Also, consider when you start a business, you build it up to a certain point. You know what I mean? And you've taken this business as high as you can take it yourself. You can't go any further, right? Mm -hmm. Now, do you still do you have an obligation? to outgrow, I mean, to allow the business to outgrow you. You know what I mean? Because now here it is. There are people below you, people who are putting their kids through school, who are, you know, dependent on this check. You know what I mean? Do you have an obligation to sell this business, to blow it up even further, even if that means that you no longer have control of it? But now these other people who are behind you can now have more stable income. You know, they don't have to necessarily... Uh, depend on you and your, you know what I mean, uh, 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 and how it is that you have have taken it. Your your efforts alone. I, mean, I, I, you know I, mean? I understand that concept. So, what I'm saying is yeah. the people that are buying it. How did they get to where they are? It's a it's a call. It's, it's called. Listen, most of the time it's just called uh, a, 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 a a fundraising round. It's just we're just putting out stock. We're creating. We're, we're, we're creating I get it. I get it. Stock and whoever buys it buys it. And you know what I'm saying. So it's like it's no longer you no longer becomes it no longer becomes one person's company. It's you know it's it's a corporation now. You know what I mean? And you know, no, I, I, I get yeah, that. But you know? this, is, this is my this is my thing. All right, I always tell people this: if a white man could do exactly what LeBron James could do, LeBron James wouldn't have a job. So so we're not we're not on Wall Street. We're not in a lot of these different financial businesses. I mean, you know, sectors. We're not. So where we always had the advantage is supposed to be entertainment and athletics, right? Because we are able to do certain things other people can't do as well as us. So I'm saying you got to take that and leverage that way you can. And Listen, we, we don't do that. We are the we are the we are the finest dish on the menu. You know what I mean? They are consuming us. They're consuming our culture. The Daniel Kaluas of the world, they can just plug him in and sell our culture through him, you know? And that's his, and that's his, that's his point. And he doesn't have the same attachment. If we come to Daniel Kalu and say, "Hey, brother, you know, this is, you know, what, we, what we're talking about right now. Why can't you stand up?" He can disappear back to England if he wants to. Now, see, this you know is the I mean? thing, though, and, and see, this is the trick. There's going to be a point where he's not as popular, where he's not as hot, and then going to be sitting there trying to get on the BET after school special. You see what I'm saying? Then they know that. So what I'm saying, when they ready, to, when they done with you, that's what I'm saying. It's not, it's not worth it. At the end of the day, it's really not worth it. I agree. Not, yeah, because what what happens is when they got see what we don't think about is the return trip. See mm -hmm. all that climbing high and stuff like that when they're done with you. See the fame. Please, one day it's gonna be it for Kevin Hart. One day it's gonna be it for what? Well, that, that's just what it is. Yeah. That is the bottom line. And so when they have to return you back to these people that you turned your back on. There's nowhere else you can go. Yeah. That's no, it. There's no. nowhere else you can go. And that's what people need to realize. That's the truth. Yeah, but he made, his money, he made his money before that, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he's sitting pretty. So we'll see how it goes for him. Yeah, uh, Stacey like, Dash made her money. A lot of people made their money. But let me tell you something. What I realize is this. If you start winning the game, they change the rules to it. So you got to oh, be well, conscious well. of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, great conversation. It's great. So and uh, oh yeah, Marshall said oh I'm oh, oh, sorry before oh yeah small yeah, smart, acts yes yeah, 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 yeah. yes yes we love for you all to watch small acts yes that's Marshall, right represent Marshall small acts is incredible and I'm gonna tell you that was I love that series my wife small acts is on is on is on Amazon am I correct I believe it is I believe it's Amazon Marshall Marshall put it text us Damien's asking for it to so put it when Marshall can you put it up when you get a chance I'm gonna move it to the next topic. Yeah. I, it's tough. Now we look back. I know we had discussions about this. I think uh, earlier in the week, but um, I think that the mother was in the beginning. They have a good communication, and I think it was a language thing that kind of what you think about discipline was going to happen to a child. 
and she probably thought it was going to be some kind of other scolding or something like that. And because I don't think any parent will witness in their right mind somebody beating their kid like that. I don't think. Nah, man. Nah. <laughs> and, I, and like you said, I think she probably did the best she knew how to do in the moment. I just feel really, really bad for her, man. You know, um, I think there was a language barrier, obviously. Um, she didn't 100% understand until mm -hmm. she actually saw it. And I think when she saw it, it was just, you know what I mean? She got mm -hmm. it in the moment. She just knew it. Like she said, she felt like she was going to jail. <clears throat> I see that she gave her part of the interview, <clears throat> not showing her face, speaking in Spanish. So she don't want no smoke with the authorities and all of that. You already know. So, you know, um, and she's just trying to get an education for her child. And I think that, you know, it's reprehensible that those officials went and took advantage of her daughter that way and her status that way. You know what I mean? So now that being said, I remember my parents, you know, when you older, they remember them telling me that, you know, they used to get spanking. They used to get, yeah, you know, <laughs> they took advantage of a non-speaking English. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you know, listen, man, mm -hmm. it's like, I remember my, I remember my parents telling me that, you know, they used to get that, they used to um, they used to get their ass up, man, when they were kids, you know, in mm -hmm. school. And then they they catch it from the teacher and they catch it coming home, you know, and then they catch it from the neighbors. But, you know, this wasn't that, man. You know what I mean? I think this is something different, man. It's a different day now, you know. I don't think you can do that. Let me let me tell you something. Wow. Well, I can say Serene, shout out to this Serene. Very you this. Schools, power shout out to Serene. Poverty <laughs> places a parent in a terrible position because they want to be seen as a good parent who can or has control of their child. Wow. You know? Yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah, that's, yeah. That's that's deep. That's deep. Yeah. That's deep. Yeah. That's, deep. Yeah. that's deep. That's deep. First of yeah. all, two things. First of all, I believe that Derek White could get everybody right. I I, I believe that Derek <laughs> <laughs> I want no I want no problem. I want no problems with Derek White. He, can, he can get you right. Let me let me say this. Let me say this. I, I agree that there is there's something I, I don't know if this woman is undocumented or not. She's mm. afraid. Um my parents, let me say this, my parents were were very much on the side of teachers. They were very much on the side of administrators. They 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 gave respect to we didn't have any problems or whatever. But let me say this. If my parents ever had to go up and defend us against something that was wrong, then it was going to be much like like uh Derek's wife's resolve, honestly. My, because whether you know the language or not, most people it's their natural inclination to defend their children and to see that happen to your child. I mean, they were fortunate they caught the right woman because 99% yeah. of the people I know, this this story would have been very different today. This oh, would yeah. have been very, very different today. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, my mother used to beat the fool out of us, but you wasn't going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, that was, that's despicable. And, and we've seen this treatment. And I don't know that that would have been the case if it was a white child. I don't know if it was a case mm. if it was somebody else. I don't Very know that that question. would have been. Yeah. You, you see what I'm saying? Mm. So the way I look at it is this. When a parent is there, they should be the one to discipline or control their child. That's right. what you do. You right. call a parent. Up. I had one situation where my nephew uh, had a little incident on the bus where he was acting out. So I went up to the school. And when I went up to the school, I sat with the principal and the administrator and my nephew. I got my nephew so right in front of everybody, there was nothing else to say. But I got it right. I got the situation right. And I let the principal know if there's a problem, you call me. Because I can control him. I can mm -hmm. handle him. You don't need to handle him because I got that handled. You see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But, mm -hmm. but I'm not putting that in your hands because I don't need you to be the disciplinarian with him. I mm -hmm. can handle that. You see what I'm saying? And so I, I do feel that like this woman was a victim. The child was a victim as well. Because mm -hmm. I don't know anywhere today where you could just hit kids like that. Yeah. You and that goes, to, that goes to Serene Point. That was a power thing right there. I really didn't uh, ever get parents. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 So listen, man, tonight we got something special going on tonight. We got one of our good brothers that have been on the show before. He's going to jump in this segment with us. <laughs> Hey, Jamie, can you bring out my man Bradley, aka Jelly? You gonna pay me my money, right? I told you, you gonna pay me my money. Oh, sorry, hold on. <laughs> Better have my money. What up, Brad? What's the deal? What up, Brad? What's the deal, man? What's going on, man? I came in. I've been doing some studying on police brutality. I figured Rod needed a break. Uh, trying, to, trying to explain all these situations. He pulled the Ted Cruz. Went up to Mexico. Yeah. Get at me. Oh, what was the latest uh, excessive force situation? Oh, man. Nah, man. Well, since you said excessive force, Brad, 
this segment we're gonna talk about buck breaking. Uh, Tariq Nashik has his movie coming out. He made all the movies on uh, hidden figure, uh, hidden colors before. And there's a movie called Buck Breaking. For those that don't know what Buck Breaking is, Buck Breaking was a term in slavery when they used to take the strongest male, aggressive black man that was against whatever thing the slave master was doing, and they took him in front of other slaves and male and female and his children, and they raped him. So it's called breaking the buck. So it's like breaking an animal into being controlled. So it's the, they called it breaking the buck. Jamie, can you play the video from the, the trailer? from the movie that's coming out. Well, it's already out, it came out April 30th, I think. When we talk about buck breaking, we have to understand that buck breaking is a show of power, it's a show of dominance. So we can't talk about buck breaking without talking about power. When we look at the domination of black people by the dominant society, what we are in essence seeing is that this society wants to ensure that we are not able to actually meet out that thing that makes humans exist. And that is creating families and procreating. See, psychologically, when we're talking about the sexualizing of our people, primarily from the dominant society or the system of white supremacy, it had to be established in a very impinging way from the mental state. This whole notion that masculinity is somehow toxic and detrimental to society is nothing but an attempt to emasculate black malehood. It's clearly an agenda. If you have two eyes in your head and you're able to see, you can see that it's an agenda and it's an agenda to, to decrease our population. It's always been about destroying the black family. The family's the foundation of the people. The heterosexual black male is last on the pecking order here in America. If you're just a, a heterosexual black man, how are you going to beat the case? Because when you show up to court, when you show up to the job interview, when you show up to wherever, you coming in here as a heterosexual black man, you have no power. When Mark Twain confessed that we, white people, ground the manhood out of the Negro, why ground the manhood out of the Negro? Because it's, the, it's black masculinity that most exposes the fraud of white masculinity. We, as the progenitors of culture, the ones who are the fathers and mothers of civilizations, who taught all people, who people look to for social cues, whether they want to realize it or not, I think they feel if they can get us to adapt to it, they can get everybody to adapt to it. If anybody should have a problem with European males, it should be the European female. Because everything the European male has ever learned to do to us, he first practiced on his own woman. We need resources in education. We need resources in labor. We need resources in politics. We need resources in medical. We need resources in so many things, but they ignore that and they put millions and even billions of dollars to tell us that you need to really embrace your LBGT side. So. These people have an agenda, and it's up to us to understand what the agenda is. That was deep. <laughs> so for those who know, that was Buck Breaking, the movie. I believe it came out. I think you can find it on Amazon. Um, you saw the website also. And I have all the, all the first, I think the first five series, I think the brother put out, uh, Tariq Nashi. So any thoughts, gentlemen? Do you, Jelly? I mean, Brad? <laughs> I'm ready to throw a garbage can through a pizza. <laughs> 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 oh, gosh. Yo. As deep oh, as man. that is, as deep as that trailer was, and as dark as the topic is, uh, to see Corey Holcomb pop up there, that was a change. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love Corey Holcomb. Corey Holcomb is one of the funniest comedians, man. Um, it's it's hard. It's I think bug breaking take, takes many different forms. It's the sexual or demasculation of the the black man who's head of the family. It's the uh, providing riches to a select few in the black community, kind of similar to what you were talking about earlier on in the show. Kind of, yeah. hey, if we can uh, 
push this pile of gold towards you. Could you just quiet down the rest of them? That kind of vibe. I think it takes a lot of forms. It's very, and it's something that I've been thinking about for a while now. I think every time we talk about celebrities and, you know, they're the news drivers, they're the influencers, they create this world where people, I think people think the opposite of poor is extremely wealthy. And I disagree. I think the opposite of poor is not being poor. And I think in setting goals, we need to set that as a goal along the way. Let's first not be poor. Because when you're poor, it encompasses all of your energy. How am I going to eat? How am I going to clothe myself? How am I going to take care of my family? Um, what do I do with my time? It's a step above being incarcerated, where they tell you everything to do. So when you're poor, and it's not a not talking down to anybody who's suffering from that, your time is not your time. So I think the first goal is to get out of the hole because it's an adjustment to go to rich, to go to Jay-Z, Kevin Hart, Daniel Kaluuya, rich. It's an adjustment. That's why so many lottery winners go broke. They don't know how to live. They don't know how to adjust. And I think that's the problem so much. And anything that they can do to, to back to the, to the trailer, anything they can do to break up that normal, quality of life. You don't have to have to have the most money in the world to have a nice quality of life. And I'm not saying limit your goals or your ambitions or your dreams. Our community needs to stop being poor first. Poverty is one of the biggest diseases we're facing. It's affecting almost everything we do. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with garbage men and post office workers and things like that. And you can step up to be more and more and more and more. But let's first, let's stop being poor. So when you talk about buck breaking, you're you're directly affecting a family's ability to just exist, to go to work, go to school, come home, spend time with each other, eat together. You know, um, I used to watch these parents. Mother's home clockwork, 3.30. Father's home clockwork at 5 o'clock. By 6 o'clock, they were eating. You know, it was just this, a regular quality of life. And they weren't the Rockefellers. They were just regular people, not poor. Mm-hmm. But I think that's the first step. That's the thing I think about with buck breaking. You're, you're, you're directly interrupting the quality of life for so many just regular people. There's nothing wrong with being a regular person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, mm-hmm. no, definitely. You mentioned when you mentioned poverty, that's, you know, I, I believe the definition basically is is just, you know, uh, it's relative, basically. You know, it's resources. You know, one person has more resources than the other. One group has more functional resources than the other, you know? So when you start talking about that, we, we, we have to understand well, what, what, what's, what, how do we, how do we create that equality? You know, how do we get what the other side has? How do we get closer to parity? You know, and when you start talking about buck breaking, that's like, that's like the, I think that's the, um, almost like the, the first salvo. It's kind of like, listen, you know, you're not going to ever, we're not on parity. Get that out your mind. Um, we'll never be on parity. You're not worthy of parity, you know, um, so you will always be poor. You will always be beneath, you know, and I think poverty, once you understand it really is a state of mind, you know, um, you think poor, you are poor. You believe that of yourself. You believe that you have less than, so you have less than, you know, the resources that we're talking about are things that we all want. Okay. So you know, you could be you could be poor in happiness. You could be poor in love. You can be poor in emotional support. You can be poor in a lot of different places. You know, spiritually poor. You know, so um, so it's definitely a state of mind. So the first place that they created that poverty was buck breaking. You know, they it was it was like letting us understand that you were never you were you you are beneath me. And I think we just never got past that. And I think that that continues on to this day. You know, every time you see a young man shot in the street by a police officer. You know, uh, for no reason, that's buck breaking. You know, and uh, it's 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 you know, um, every time you see a celebrity who, you know, he he's riding high, and then all of a sudden, you know, you they 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 cut him low. You know, I think that's a form of buck breaking. You know, it's like a psyop, it's a psychological operation. You know, and um, and it's all I think it's all uh fruit from the same tree. You know, but you know what? I'll, I'll say this, Derek and, and um Brad. One of the things that got me, and D explained this thoroughly about this idea of taking a man's manhood, that that there is something about you that I need to keep under control or break you to the point where you will never see yourself 
to your full potential because I'm afraid of, of it. Right. I'm intimidated by it. That's why it's the thing about, you know, I had a, a grandmother that was afraid of white people because if you looked at white people in their eye where she came from, it could get you killed. So she didn't like people like uh, Muhammad Ali. She, the way he spoke to white people and stuff like that, she was afraid of that. That's all psychological. That's all there. And so this thing about the emasculation of black men, um, you know, I'm, I'm watching these young men like like the the, the uh, little Nas X and stuff like that walking around in in, in, the, in the way he's presenting himself and things like that. And, and there and there's somebody funding that. There's somebody paying for that. There's somebody paying for for you to be this minstrel show. And things like that, you know. Those are yeah, and, and much like yourself, uh, D, I was raised around strong men. I was raised around a strong father. I had a strong grandfather and great grandfather and uncles and things like that. And the reality of it is this: it was very, very important the way you carried yourself. And to your point, Brad, if that meant that you just wasn't going to be a high level executive, then that's what it meant. The house that I'm sitting in right now was purchased by my grandfather, who had a third grade education, and he drove a truck. You see what I'm saying? I'm sitting here in the house that he bought with a master's degree. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, it was because of what he did and his sacrifice that got me to where I was going. And I was going to make sure. And I looked at him like he was the president of the United States. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because I was just as proud of him. And so the reality of it is this. We've got to learn to hold our position. We've got to learn to keep our position. But I'm, I'm much like Brad to the point. The silver and gold, I, I'm old school. What profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? To me, it's not worth it. All those things like that. I just know there's there, there's a force that is working against us that is constantly trying to keep us swimming upstream. And that's the that's the reality. And I think what happens is we've got to kind of reset our definition yeah. of success. That's yeah. it. I, that, yeah. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah, no, shout out to Damien for checking in on us. Um, so for me, it's a whole about the breaking up the black family, that whole buck breaking video. Like I think the the agenda that the the that they, they push pushing so hard, like you say, little Nas X, and we can go on for a whole bunch of them, destroying the black family. The reason the the whole thing with every movement we had was started with the black family. The story right. of the the pennies that we saved up to put them all the kings in the marches. The pennies that we saved up to help establish these these uh, historical black houses. These certain the back in the day when the now this in churches, Kevin, when the churches used to be more on the front lines helping out and stuff like that. These are from the black family. And that's my thing with the whole the whole buck breaking thing. Like y'all both said, y'all all said it. It's about poverty. It's about economics. But breaking up that family dynamic is so on their agenda. You know why are they so attacking masculinity? No, you they talking about toxic masculinity. No, that, that's not us. Like you said before, everything that you have done to us, a white man has done to your women first, and that is so absolutely the truth. So mm -hmm. when you try, they try to say like it's toxic masculinity mm -hmm. and all the other stuff and, and all the things against male. Like, come on, that, it's a whole agenda for, for a reason. And they got so much financial backing, like you said, with the little Nas X. And, and but it is an like agenda that. because let me say something. The way I mean, I started <laughs> hearing in the '90s, uh, metrosexual. I never went to a unisex barber shop and all the stuff like that. Even the clothing started blending together. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And I, you know, you gotta wear the '90s stuff was too baggy. Everything needs to be tight. I'm not wearing tight clothes. It's just, I'm just not, it's just, I'm just not doing it. I'm, not, I'm, I'm just not, I don't care who, nobody's going to dictate that to me. That's just it. You see what I'm saying? And so what I think is this, two things. If somebody tells you how to feel, then they're going to tell you how to think. And if they tell you how to think, then they can control you with that. You know what I'm saying? So if something is not funny, I'm not going to laugh. And that's just the bottom line. And somebody shouldn't tell you, I can't eat some food. You tell me it tastes good and it doesn't. I'm just not having it. And that's just the reality of it. Go ahead, Brad. Yeah, but look at that level of confidence. I mean, that's an ideal. That's one of the main things that you get from your family unit. Yeah, right. You, oh, get experience. Yeah. you get You're allowed to be yourself, to grow, to make mistakes. Uh, you provided some grace in your mistakes to kind of pick yourself up and learn from them, a support system. So if you attack the family system, you're directly uh, kind of chopping down individual confidence. That's the worst thing. That's the biggest threat to the power structure. Confident people who can't be told to laugh at certain things, who can't be told to wear certain styles. So, so when you take away the father, which makes the mother work extra hard, so now she can't provide all the motherly things because she's being the father too. Whatever scenario it is, now you're raising kids and communities of kids and generations of kids that don't have confidence or security to even try things. The biggest 
I think detriment personally, I see with the broken family system. And again, I'll tie it back to the poverty. When all of your time and energy is owed to someone else because of your, your situation, where's your room for creative uh, solutions to think about what you want to do with yourself? How can you help and give back? How can you do extracurricular things? How can you feed yourself with art and, 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 and you know, the soft skills like that? How can you do that when all you're, when all you're doing is thinking about, man, how can I survive with, without a leader? And I'll, I'll be honest with you. And I hear, and I, I love it when you guys refer to your upbringings. We can't do this by ourselves. So when we get guidance from, man, when I see, I, I, I can't help but give old black men respect for just making it through. You know, my mother's in her 70s and she talks to me about, yeah, which is normal to, to not go to a white bathroom or what, not drink for what. So to see our elders kind of pass that down to us, look at all the people that are missing that. I give them the utmost credit for just enduring. Like we're getting a taste of it now with insurrections and crazy audits and all that. We're getting a taste of it, but that was their life. You know, they were, our, you know, they were, if they were, they were born in the 30s and 40s. They Word grew there, up through it. So yeah. and just to pass that experience down. And and I, I hear I hear when Rod says it, when Derek says it, talks about it, about his kid uh in the service. You didn't provide him the riches or you know, this this opulent lifestyle. You provided him a life where y'all can sit down and think, what can I do with my life? Where can I kind of apply my talents, contribute? grow, learn, like you gave them options. That's that's the opposite of poor, not right. filthy rich. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So when you start taking, when you start cut, they would say cut the head off the snake. You cut the head off the snake of a family, look at the fallout. Yeah. You see, that's one thing that bothered me with hip hop. And I'm gonna say, we got to this stage where, you know, one of the first insults was, you don't have this, you don't have that, your car is old, you ain't got the money, let me know when your money grow up, this, that, and the third. And we started doing that. You never heard the Temptations get up there and tell the Four Tops, you ain't got no Cadillac, and I do, and all this stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? It became this competition. And that's why all of a sudden, everybody had to get gold, everybody had to get diamonds, everybody had to get this, everybody had to get that. And if I couldn't get it, then I was going to go out and steal it, and this, that, and the third. I remember Biggie had the line, this is dedicated to all the people that call the top for me, when I was out there just trying to sell drugs to feed my daughter, you wasn't about to sell no drugs to get no Similac. You were selling drugs to have that, that affluent lifestyle. <laughs> At the end of the day, we started buying into that. That's what yeah. it was. And You're that's right, the right, thing. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm with Brad. The biggest thing, I think, with children is esteem. Dead serious. Yeah. If you can build a child up with some esteem, then you will know who you are. That is so important that somebody tells you who you are. I mean, my father made me think my last name was royalty or something. Oh, let me tell you something. You're a Walter. You better do this. You better do that. And blah. You know what I'm saying? My name was no better than nobody else's, but he made me believe it was. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's the reality. And then you grow up and you start to develop your own worldview and carry yourself like a man. My father used to, I, I, now that I lost my father, I always think about things, his words and stuff. I remember one time he told me this very, very simply. He said, don't ever let me hear you have a man standing in your face just screaming on you. You either walk away or you whoop his behind, but you don't ever just stand at attention and let somebody just bark on you. You've got to make a decision because you're not a child. And that's the reality of it. And those little things like that, you keep because he always said, one day I'm going to leave you. One day your mother's going to leave you. you got to navigate this world by yourself. And that's the reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Brad, last point before we got to go to break. Last yeah, thing two, break. two quick points and, and to follow with with. Calvin, um, <laughs> but I follow with Calvin, and I, I spoke about this. I spoke to D about this. Most of the songs brag about how not poor I am. Look how not poor I am, and it's a scar, it's a trauma, and that's that's one point. The second point is, in a capitalist society, you need underlings. So why not systemically keep a supply of underlings and poor people and people who need you that's what keeps rich people rich right so when they say oh, i don't know i don't know what systemic racism is or whatever or classism you need you need a worker you need a base yeah yo brad 
you always bring the smoke. You always bring the fire. We got to get you on here more, man. We're moving to Wednesdays, Brad, so hopefully it's free up your time some, so we can bring you on Wednesday nights at 9 so we can see if you can. But you always bring the intelligence, man. I don't know why you didn't wear your Clark University wore that Columbia shirt but you because you went to a historical black college with grad school. For, Brad's very educated. Brad got like eight master degrees and shit like that. So we just love you <laughs> like that. Right. I'm talking about. I don't want Rod shitting on my degrees. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and ironically, the clock sweatshirt is is not available. Yo, Brian, man, I love you, brother, man. Thanks for the Mother's Day gift again to my mom. This is my brother for real. This is my brother, 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 brother. So I love, love you. Brother. Keep it up, man. All right, man. And I hope See I don't have soon. to go to White Castle to get a Baysmore cake, man. <laughs> peace out, yo. Peace, bro. Peace, peace, peace. Oh, peace, peace. Bro. Uh, oh, man, that was good, man. That was good, man. Uh -huh. freaking, man. Uh, that was good. Brad always brings a world of information. I love talking to brother, man. He always yeah, fills yeah. my head full of thoughts, man. But, Jamie, can you take us to break before we bring in our brother, Karan? Jam. Uh, welcome back from the break. Damien, I want to shout out my man Damien. He was in the chat big big time hard. Damien, we're going to do that Juneteenth thing, man. I know when we talk about stuff like this to get us amped, so we're going to do that Juneteenth thing. The brothers already agreed to it, so we're going to do something special. And please like and subscribe, everybody. Um, so our next guest is my brother from another mother, my frat brother, Gold Mob, my man, Karan. He's going to bring We're going to talk a lot of politics and see what else is going on in Karan's life. Jamie, can you bring in our brother, Karan? Hey, yo, what's up? What's, what's up? Man? What's going on with you, Karan? Anything good? Um, can I start with pleasantries? Yes. Can I say thank you to all of you wonderful brothers uh for my time away? Y'all know I can't stay off uh let's chop it up. <laughs> but um, you know, I had a little bit of time away and it wasn't a vacation. My grandmother passed away um on april 5th and you all sent me this plant uh reached out and expressed your your deepest sympathies for all of your listeners i just want them to know that uh y'all are not only good guys when the cameras are on but specifically when the cameras are off and i just really appreciate it from my family um just thank you for sending this i'm taking very good care of it it's already sprouted <laughs> leaves. Right. Um, right. so i thank you as the expression of sympathy uh thank you thank you thank you um, Very welcome, brother. Welcome. Yeah, not a problem. And, uh, you know, happy Mother's Day to all the ladies that are in the yeah. virtual room listening. Um, <laughs> even if you are not, you haven't birthed a child. If you're the mother of the group with your friends, um, you have that potential. You know, you happy Mother's Day to you as well. Uh, mm -hmm. So those are the two things I wanted to get out the way. And the last thing, 
Demond, you in the commercials and you hosting you on your, your Shaq stuff, man. You you trying to monopolize this <laughs> going on? <laughs> oh, that's classic, man. That's yeah. classic. Man. I was going with Karan, man. Yo, tell you, uh, tell your wife I don't get to speak to her. Tell her said happy Mother's Day too, brother. Not a problem. Not a problem. Yeah, She's yeah. actually uh, down by her mom right now, so I'm actually alone, which is very rare. Oh man, you got the house to yourself. Yeah, and it's just dark and boring. <laughs> <laughs> they do. The ladies do light up our lives. So, Karan, man, we know we would like to talk politics with you, brother. And recently, is this in, in Colorado? This this uh, elected official said some derogatory words. I just want you to see the video first before we chime in on this. Jamie, can you play the video tonight in Oregon? No, wrong video, Jamie. One more. A state lawmaker has been reprimanded for using what many consider a racist word during a debate at the Capitol. I'm getting there. Don't worry, Buckwheat. I'm getting there. I'm now, sorry. what I'd like to say, uh, what I'd like to say, that's an endearing term, by the way. Representative Holtorf, we must maintain order in here and not refer to any individuals other than in any inappropriate manner. That was Republican Representative Richard Holtorf of Akron during a debate on a stimulus measure Wednesday. Today, he offered an apology to fellow lawmakers. Buckwheat was a black character in the old Little Rascal TV series. All right, Karan, I'm going to you first, brother. How how do you feel? How, how would you have handled that? <laughs> you want to know how I would handle it? <laughs> <laughs> um, so if, a couple of things comes to mind, you know, because elected officials, they're very, very, very intentional. Um, specifically, these old white Republicans, because he is one. Um, and he was, I think, referencing Representative Leslie Hurd, who's a black woman. Mm -hmm. um, and he apologized, and, you know, he shifted. He's basically saying, oh, no, I was referring to someone else, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, my reaction uh, would, would have been, less gracious than the way that she reacted. I think she had tweeted later, oh, you see what I have to go through on, on a daily basis or something like that. It makes me think about these, the, these, these old systems and how in state legislatures, you have to wear a shirt and tie. You can't come in with the no collar. You know, we're more non-traditional in that sense. We'll come in with our Nehru suits and not have on a, a tie because it's symbolic of, you know, lynching, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and how they will reinforce those things, make it a big deal, make sure DeMond can't come in because he, he he's not dressed appropriately, or make sure Kelvin can't come in because he's not dressed appropriately, something like that. They will make sure to reinforce those things. But for something like this where he says something completely, just outright racist, he gets to just apologize and slide off? No, nah, I wouldn't have that. I wouldn't have that. I would, there would be a whole lot of cussing and uh, um. Shaq says in reference to Shaq and, and Charles Barkley, there would have been a lot of furniture moving. <laughs> you, you know what's funny? And it's funny, back in the day, they used to say, wherever you did it, that's where you got it. You know what I'm saying? See, they want you to have decorum, though, since you want to be... And see, what bothers me is this. If you're going to come out there and, and, and talk this, then own it. I hate the whole dumbed-down thing. I hate the whole, oh, and that's a term of endearment, by the way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. don't have to explain when something is a term of endearment. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I'm like you. I'd have had a term of endearment too. So we just the endearment was still on a different meeting that day. But that's what I'm saying. At least own it. That's what I mean. Own it. That's what gets me. No, you know what it is. That's I think that's there's a there's a saying. I'd rather ask for forgiveness than for permission. I think that is an indication of their mentality with regard to that. I think it's something that we maybe need to adopt ourselves in a proactive manner. You know what I mean? Um, because this just keep we, we keep complaining about the same thing. Oh, they said something that I don't like. They said something disrespectful to me. They disrespected me. Well, you know, oh, you know, oh, oh, don't worry about it. Oh, that was a term of endearment. I, you know, okay, maybe we need to start doing some shit like that. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I think I think Damien said to my corner pack. What Brad said, forty five, brought this on, and then Damien also said, now nah, it's been for centuries. I agree with both brothers. I think yeah. it's been it for centuries. I think forty five just lets you say. Fuck it and say, hey, everybody just be white. Be white as you can be because that's, that's our last stand. Let it go. Go out, go out. Be white as yeah. white. <laughs> yeah. white, as white. Right. Right. wide open, man. Just wild out, man. For real. 40, 45 know? made it uh, go back to it being more overt, 
over it. Correct. Like, yeah. I feel like a, a couple years ago, the Obama years, they were still trying to be like somewhat covert, um, you know, saying certain things, trying to be slick, but like, you know, 45 made it uh, cool to be racist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 that, that, that race, race, yeah, yeah. It's like orange is new black, you know. Race, you know, being racist was the new being white. Out, like you said, overt racist. Mm-hmm. Like you know, no more pulling back the scab. Slow. We're gonna rip the damn bandaid off and be racist as hell to you now. So, right, it's it's, it's, it's a crying shame. So, Mayor Cuomo, Quran's favorite person, is back in the news <laughs> again. He signed a bill to restore voting rights. For, uh, for former for felons at the release of prison. Any thoughts, my brothers? Um, You know, what always kills me with how they do the reporting on stuff like this is that they'll slide credit for really great things to Governor Cuomo um, when all he's doing is signing the bill. In terms of really dealing with the, the minutia of each house, um, so you got to think about the Assembly, the State Senate, the local representatives who come forth with these bills have to essentially battle within their respective caucus to get it passed and to also build up and get the folks on on, um, in the the other uh, chamber, which would be the Senate, to also get a sponsor, to get uh, consensus in there, to get it passed. Both houses pass it and Cuomo just has the easy job of signing away. You know, when the reporting, and this is something good, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm I'm not critiquing that. I'm more or less critiquing the process. Because every time I come on here, I always tell y'all how much local elections, like, we really have to pay more attention to that. We have to be more invested in that. I feel like this is an example of local elections um, putting forth something that we, mm-hmm. we will mostly benefit from. Mm-hmm. You know, so when you think about uh, folks that are on parole that are now essentially getting the the opportunity as soon as they're they're out to vote like this is this is um a bill that goes into immediate effect it's not oh happening in 2023 or you got to wait a hundred and some odd days this this takes effect immediately so if you're on parole and you're essentially set free with these provisions they have to give you voter registration information make sure you fully understand it and recognize that your rights have be been reinstated juxtaposed to the way that it, it it was is that you know you had to wait for a certain amount of time to pass and after a certain amount of time i think it was like 120 days that's yep. when the governor could pardon you and this was only um because of what had passed in 2018 mm-hmm. so you know th- this is um a, a couple of things we we got to really be more invested in the local elections and really hold our local representatives like their feet to the fire on providing more things like this uh governor cuomo uh making headlines again um but you know shifting the narrative from all of the things that have uh plagued him uh to his own detriment for the things that he's done so this is uh more of his playbook trying to make him seem like he's just this great leader of our state um but you know i think it's it's definitely a great thing but really just my emphasis is on the, always on the local folks i gotta get, i gotta get whoever is marketing the team i gotta get i gotta get them for me because i got a bad check it pass i gotta change my shit up <laughs> no, let me ask you, Karan, 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 I'm, I, I, I'm not gonna ask you who because i'm sure you're not gonna really say it publicly yet but do you have someone that you are going to endorse for the mayor of New York City. Do you have that person in your mind yet? Or are we still too early in the process? Do we write up against it in June, right? Yes. So June 22nd, the day before my birthday, uh, are the primaries. And, you know, there, there's a lot of candidates out there for mayor vying for everybody's support. You know, they got uh, Jay-Z, Nas, and Diddy coming together on Zoom calls, endorsing them. Um, and me, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I can't say that I'm not impressed. Everyone is going to say everything that, um, but everybody's using the buzzwords. You know, they, they want to dismantle uh, systemic racism in our city. They want to bring uh, New York back. Uh, they want to do all of these things. And it sounds good and it always sounds good in this time. I don't have anyone that I'm like, oh, yeah, this is a, a firm choice for our city. Because, um, you know, as we get closer to the 
election dates that we're running up against. Cause you know, with early voting, voting basically starts on the 13th, even though like the, the primary mm -hmm. date is the second. Um, you know, you, you, you're gonna hear more, there, there's more background, there's a bunch to dissect, whether you're talking about Yang, I was reading this thing about Eric Adams today. Um, my advice to everybody, you know, don't look for who's endorsing who, do your homework. Right. Uh, don't vote for somebody because your your mom votes for them. I'm seriously, me, in 2013, when I graduated college, me and my parents were but, button heads with each other on mm. who to vote for for mayor. You know, um, don't vote for people just because it's fashionable. Don't vote for people because Jay-Z, Nas, and Diddy endorsed them. Don't do that. You have to do your homework. Yeah, um, so I don't I don't have um, someone that I'm like, oh, definitely championing. I'm, I'm doing my homework as well. I need to really get versed in their policies. You know what? I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Andrew Yang started getting a lot of attention, right? And I started realizing something. The more I hear him speak, the less I'm impressed with him. He Me makes too. a lot. He, he makes a lot of very, <laughs> very, uh, I mean, ridiculous mistakes. He does. I mean, he, he brings a lot of unnecessary attention to certain issues. He, I mean, really, I, I realized, I, I remember even when he ran for president, I didn't like the idea of the open shirt thing because I thought it was done just to look different. That's all I thought it was done for. I thought it was done, you know what I'm saying? There's certain things, I can almost tell when people are pandering and it, it just always feels like that. And I don't, I, this is what I think. I think New York is in a situation now, especially coming from de Blasio. We're in a situation now, we need somebody brilliant. We need somebody innovative. Mm -hmm. We need somebody sharp. We need somebody young and aggressive. I mean, we need we need somebody that because a friend of mine made this statement a while ago, and I always listen to it. He says, "In a dimly lit room, a candle looks like a star," and I think that's what a lot of us have experienced in New York politics. And we need we need someone like yourself. We need somebody that is really willing to go against the grain and do something different. Because listen, we had. 300,000 people leave this city. You know what I'm saying? Leave this city during this pandemic. And the numbers are still counting. So we need somebody different. And Yang, I got to admit, some people just think because because I'm just keeping a buck because he's Asian, he's smart. That's what some people yep. think. I, yeah, I that, heard that, that. I'm going to keep it a buck. That's what people think. This is best chopping up. We said what we want to say. That's that, what man. it is. And I'm sorry. <laughs> I listen to my man and I'm not finding that. I can't front. He was the wrong dude to cheat off of in the class. I can't see. <laughs> you, you, you hit the nail on the head with him. Uh, in, in from my synopsis from afar, the funniest one of the the funnier gaffes with him, and I'll, I'll get into the gaff after this. Dude has never voted for mayor. Like that. Wow. That's on the record. That's a fact. So wow. now you want us to vote for you when you've never voted for? You've never been invested in the city in that sense. That you I didn't know. He's, I didn't know he's from New York. It's a really? well, you, you as well. But you know, people own property, <laughs> and you you can claim a city because you're down on paper as living there. You know, so you know that, that that's one thing. But the funny thing with him in terms of him putting his foot in the mouth. I think this was like a, a commercial that he had on Twitter regarding supporting uh, bodegas um, on the stores, and everybody in the comments was like, "Bro, you're not in no bodega. You're not in a bodega. You're, you're in a supermarket. It's Word. clean. Like, like it was the funniest. funniest. Right. There was no cat sleeping on the bread. Where's the cat that sleep on the bread? Where's the cat? Right. Ain't no big thing you have no cat. And you know the cat is the manager. You know? <laughs> <laughs> how could you not have that? So it was just, it, it was hilarious. He shows how out of touch the city, uh, out of touch with the city he is. And I think there's a couple of things that he's he's relying on. I, you know, New York City is so weird because we we are in a special time in the sense like if we have this Asian candidate leading or leading according to polls and stuff like this. I think, and like that. I think, I think Eric Adams should be in front. I saw a poll that Eric Adams creeped up on him. Yeah, he yeah. Eric Eric is always gonna be there because of his his long, long, long his history been in the news. We know his face is familiar face. We know how it is. Yeah. You know, and a, a lot of things are up in the air because of ranked choice voting, which I know we're gonna get into. Um, mm -hmm. but you know, Yang also with with how things are going with the city, here we are coming off all this racial 
injustice of last year spill over more into this year. And we have the stop Asian hate and all of the things that have, you know, the 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 windfall from the coronavirus and Asians uh essentially receiving a lot of blowback and 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 racist. Don't 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 get me wrong. So here he is coming in off of that, talking about universal basic income. His posters are hanging up in Brownsville in East New York. He's got people on the ground. He has money coming in from all over because again, I don't understand why people would essentially look for billionaires to save them. They're not trying to save them. They're trying to save their pockets. And he's not a, a billionaire, but you know, dude, he's dude, very, very rich. Very, very rich. <laughs> he's, he's better than all of us put together ten times. No doubt. <laughs> the, the other thing that was a, a, this is the last point about like things that he said that's just been like you putting your foot in your mouth. He talked about what he did during the pandemic, and he was like, you know, I, I had to leave this city. I went upstate. Um, how can I work? in an apartment in New York City with, I think, two children okay. running around. And it was like, that's, do, what do everybody, you know, that's what all of us are doing? Was doing. <laughs> all of yeah. us are doing that. Yeah. And it's more than two kids in, in most of our households. Like, come on. Right, mm -hmm. right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. exactly. Yeah, that's man, what I'm saying. Know. So unnecessary things like that. You know what I mean? Unnecessary. So you shoot yourself in the foot. And so sometimes what I think is, because you exercise poor judgment. See, and we can't go through this again. Like I, I was thinking about the other day, you know what de Blasio has done now, you know better than I have, Karan. But just as a regular citizen in New York, you know what de Blasio, two things was important to him. He ran on, he was tired of horses and buggies going around Central Park. That was his big <laughs> issue he came in. Then after that, Eric Garner got killed and, and that changed the whole city, right? And then the other thing, making sure that people couldn't drive more than 25 miles per hour. Vision yeah. zero. Vision zero. Those two things that de Blasio, vision zero. I don't know nothing else de Blasio did. Yeah, listen, he lied to me in my face so about something. I mean, but that's another subject. And about the stop Asian hate, Asian people own, run our communities. And I'm scared that they get these, these rules and these laws are backing up. They control our markets. They control our hair salons and et cetera, et cetera. And they can use it anytime against us. But that's another subject, but I just want to put that out there. They, so I'm kind of I'm kind of scared of that law that writes on that as, as a black man. So I know Jamie's probably upset. Like I can't believe you're saying that, but that's the truth. Anyhow, <laughs> rank and choice. You about to speak on the Quran? Can you explain? This is something new to New York City. It's only done in New York City, but can you explain what rank and choice is? And do you think that other states will start doing this? Well, with all the voter suppression stuff kind of going on. So rank choice voting. I'm gonna try to make it as simple as possible. I know um, you probably watch videos and like, I still don't get it. <laughs> you, know, like, mm -hmm. you probably hear people talk about it. I still don't get it. Um, and every time I do my homework on it, I get to a point where I'm like, okay, this is probably the simplest way that I can explain it to someone else. But just so everyone is aware, ranked choice voting is going to be used uh, for not the first time, but first time citywide. Um, this June. Ranked choice voting happens in primaries, special elections, and runoffs. Um, so in November, ranked choice voting is not a thing. So check that off. That's simple. You understand that. Uh, ranked choice voting is only for citywide positions. So for your state assembly member, don't worry about it. Your congressional representative, don't worry about it. Um, for your, um, for the governor, don't worry about it. With it, the this positions that uh, encompass ranked choice voting are mayor, comptroller, borough president, public advocate, and city council members. As I've said plenty of times before on this show, this June, is probably one of the hottest contests citywide that New York City has seen. It happens every couple of years where there's a, a, a grand number of seats that are term limited, which means the folks that have been running cannot run for that seat in this election cycle. So ranked choice voting, um, to make it make sense, you are no longer voting straight down. You are voting across depending on the number of candidates. So for example, 
right now the four of us are up on the screen. We are the four candidates um, running for let's chop it up president, right? Um, I'm probably gonna get the least number of votes because I'm not <laughs> often enough. Folks are gonna give demand basically all of their votes because he's their favorite. He makes them laugh and he can talk that serious stuff. Kelvin is a close second. You know, he true, has, true, true. <laughs> he has the, the, the preachery voice and uh, he really pulls them in. Derek is the cool guy. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm with him uh, um, or, or, or not. I'm not sure if he can really advocate for my issues. This ain't personal, y'all. But, I'm that's what it really is probably. But these are all of the platforms. This is what people got about us. Um, and we can be ranked on this 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 cycle to be the president of Let's Chop It Up. So demand is a lot of people's first choice, right? And for ranked choice voting, you could rank up to five. But well, we don't have five, so we're going with this four. Um Damon is first, Kelvin is second, Derek is third, I'm last. I, on, on my ballot, um, because, you know, let's say Amiri is voting. Amiri is putting me first. She ain't putting Damon first. You know what I'm saying? That's <laughs> white. <laughs> well, I'm her first choice. But her second choice is like, oh, you know, I know Damon from Good Shepherd. Damon is her second choice on my ballot. Because I'm least favored by everyone. I, and y'all know that I'm going to be off. On Amiria's ballot, her second choice is Demond. So once I'm out, because for ranked choice voting, you have to get 51% of the vote, a true majority. So traditionally, you could see someone win with 34% of the vote. We need 51%. So like just going back, for the four that we put forth, Demond does not have 51% because we're all pulling votes from each other. But because I have the least amount, and specifically for Amiria's ballot, I'm going to be eliminated. But her second choice vote, which is for demand, will go to him under my elimination. Does that make sense? Yep. Gotcha. I got that? it. Got but it. I'm eliminated. My second place vote goes to demand. There's other folks who listen to Let's Chop It Up, and they really favor uh, Kelvin, Derek, et cetera, et cetera. And they're they have their second choices. So once um, I'm eliminated, boom, we get to, to Derek. Derek is the, is the third in, in this sense. Whoever put uh, Kelvin second, DeMond second, their votes keep going until we get to 51%. In New York City, the way this goes, it keeps going until we get to the last two, even though we get over 51%. Mm -hmm. So it's... It sounds extremely complicated, but you want a true majority, funny. right? You want a true majority and just recognize your second place vote is very, very important. People ask, <laughs> it's easy to get voted into baseball hall. Of Fame, right? <laughs> that was funny. That was funny. Uh, people, uh, people ask, well, I don't want to go through all of that. I'm just voting for Demond because Demond is my guy. Um, and you can do that. You know, Demond, you know, he might be the clear cut favorite. Regardless, and with him being the clear-cut favorite, you know, more than likely he's going to get that 51%, you know, and those other votes won't even even matter. Um, the reason why ranked choice voting was introduced, it was introduced in uh, 2019. The city voted for it, you know. Uh, it was a, a citywide ballot measure. I think a lot of people didn't understand it fully, um, but they voted for it because it sounds like, oh, it's more democratic. We get to vote more than once, but not in the illegal Trump way that they've been talking about. Mm -hmm. We get to do it in a, in a legal sense. And it's only during the primaries. 73% um, of the city voted for it. So, you know, this isn't something that they just placed for us. This is something we voted on. Um, and recently, like a couple days ago, um, there was these, these, these Black council members. Uh, they essentially tried to take ranked choice to court, um, saying, basically saying our communities are ill-prepared Ill uh, for what this is going to do. It's going to disenfranchise Black and Brown communities. And uh, the judge basically shot it down like, you know, you, you all are coming with this really late. 
as soon as it passed, this was should have been brought forth. Mind you, a lot of these council members were supporting it. So I think this is like, this might really rock the boat in terms of making elections extremely predictable. Um, in some instances, it can make the field a little bit more fair. Um, and the other thing, when people campaign with rent choice, it's it, 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 there's less smear campaigns because I, I want your second place vote. You know, demand is going to be buttoned. Mm, very true. Very, very true. Very true. Quran is going to get kicked off. And when Quran gets kicked off, I want Quran's um, people, I want his base to know that, you know, I had Quran. And because I did that, I'm going to get all of those second place votes. That's the fastest I get to 51%. Wow. Yeah. So, um, Oregon. Oh, yeah. That's right. We have an Oregon video too, Jamie. I forgot about that. So, um, we had a, or I want to say, we can't play. It was, it, was a, it was a riot in Oregon. I think they found the people that did a, a elected official, let them in the door, or something like that, Jamie. I'm not sure. So, play the video, Jamie, real quick. Tonight, an Oregon lawmaker now faces criminal charges after his actions at the state capitol in December. Mike Nearman, Republican representative from Independence, is accused of helping far-right protesters break into the state capitol on December 21st. And you're looking at video here of that day. And that's where they confronted police and damaged the building there. That security footage shows Nearman leaving the capitol through a side door without doing anything to stop two protesters from going in. And there you see him right there in that video. He's about to go back into the building. Nearman faces charges of official misconduct and criminal trespass. We're told he'll be arraigned on May 11th. Wow. Brad, I don't think your father went to the Capitol. I saw that comment, Brad. You said uh, Brad's father was a Republican back in the day, so I don't, I don't think he would have went to the Capitol. But what's your thoughts on this, Karan? I'm going to go with you first. You might, I guess I want to go with you first, brother. Are we surprised? You know, mm. like, uh, I feel everybody knew um that this was an inside job you know they, there's better security um in walmart with a hair product <laughs> for black women locked up like you know it, it doesn't make any sense and as someone who was in the streets protesting last year you know wh wh where was that 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 same energy you know where was the same energy that y'all had in the streets for us literally peacefully protesting, maybe stopping traffic, you know, doing certain things like that. Where, where was the same energy? You know, I feel like this is them being caught, but like, what, what is going to happen? How do we truly hold them accountable? Um, and, you know, this dude, he should go to jail. You know, he, he should right. not be getting paid on, on taxpaying dollars. He should go to jail straight up. Because what would right. happen to one of us? Oh, punish. Yeah, yeah. the punish it would, have, it would have been no question. It would have been easy pun. It wouldn't even took this long to get to. It would have happened the next day. Right. <laughs> it would have been the next day. So, you know, and before before we go, I want to talk to Keisha, uh, the bad Keisha Lance Bottoms just said she's not going to re uh, run again and she's going to walk away. She don't know what she's going to do, but I know it's got to be a lot of stress on this sister and a lot of things going on. What's your thoughts about Keisha Lance Bottoms not running for mayor of Atlanta, Georgia? Um, Truly? I wish it well. You know, it, it, we're in really, really difficult times. Um, a lot of people talk about last year as like 10 years into one. Um, mm. I can only imagine what it's like being pulled in all of those different directions as a mayor, um, Mayor Keisha, uh, at that, you know, being a black woman, having a black family, having black sons, you know, all of that, all of the experiences that Atlanta, you know, when you think about it, you know, being uh, black economically, black demographically, mm -hmm. um, basically barely winning in the first place and then having to deal with, um, essentially, she's the bulwark for the, the, the foundation of white supremacy that essentially built up Atlanta, you know, before black folks really inherited it. And when we walk into a lot of spaces and places, you end up being an executive of such and such company that has this history with racism. You know, you end up being the president of this organization that has a history with racism. And then you become the bulwark for kind of rectifying it and dismantling it. Um, and when things don't go as planned, it can be extremely difficult. So I can only, imagine the position that we sh she was in, particularly with not having allies, possibly, you know, in that sort of work.
her dealing with the the Rayshard Brooks um, case. I think you, you all remember that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Rayshard Brooks in, in uh, the fast food. Uh, Wendy. Yep. You know, was sleeping, woke up, and basically, you know, shot and killed by, by officers. And this particular officer uh, was essentially fired unjustly. So now he's uh, being, he's back on the force to some degree, getting administrative leave pay, which is the, the craziest thing. And then imagine being this mayor who is, who essentially, you know, is, she looks like us, she's supposed to provide for us. Um, it looks like she's able to provide. And then we end up going back on that. That with the crushing economic um, issues around COVID, um, mm -hmm. just it, it's a it's a lot, you know. Like I say, I wish her well because I genuinely mean that. Mm -hmm. it, it's not easy, but um, you know, hopefully uh, another Keisha will rise in her place, or uh, another black man will rise in in her place, and and really be able to uh, keep our brothers and sisters. A lot of them from New York who uh, left and went down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They went, they, they went down there for the lemon pepper wings in the strip clubs. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> Kelvin, any thoughts on Keisha or uh, uh, Mayor Keisha resigning? Well, I mean, I, that, you know, not running again. I hate to see when, when good young people um, who had a lot of success, I, when, when you get the impression that they've just had enough because um, yeah. the, the currents just become too wild and you kind of count up the course. I do commend her on this. When you get to that point and you feel like I've had enough, then I respect the fact that you're willing to call it. Some people don't do that. Some people just stay in position because she was one of my early choices for VP, um, you know, and so um, I really respect what she has done. Um, Karan, I commend you because I know it takes a lot to go into this field. Politics, dealing with people, it's a lot. And I think it's, I, I think it's almost like it should be viewed as a calling because you know what you're getting yourself into. Okay. It's a lot, and it, it really takes a person that's that's selfless. And so uh, I, I commend what she's done, but I respect the fact that she's ready to go because um, when you've just had enough, sometimes you just have to take care of yourself. You have to take care of your life. You have to take care of your family. And sometimes you just need your batteries to be recharged. And I would assume um, it's in her. I would assume you'll see her resurface again at a certain point. Um, but to Karan's point, I think last year, um, took a lot out of us. I just think it did. And sometimes you just need a moment to step away. So mm -hmm. I commend her, but I will, I, she will be missed. And I thought she was a brilliant, beautiful uh, woman who did a, a, a magnanimous job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree, I agree. Yeah, man. You know, I, I think um, she, um, I agree with both of you, you know, and um, I think she just probably looked at it and she said, you know what, it's my time you know, to kind of step away and do something different. She's raised her profile, um, you know, so she's good to go. She's the former mayor of Atlanta and she's um, she's gonna go out and find an easier job in politics, you know, um, maybe she'll go out and find a nice corporate job somewhere, you know, maybe whatever, you know, and she'll sit back and get a regular check and 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 maybe she's made some 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 contacts that will help her out. And, uh, and, and, you know, she'll go out and, and do some some other great things. So, uh, <laughs> that's what was showing up. Yes, uh, go. <laughs> but she go out and she's doing some other great things, man. So, yeah, you yeah. know, bless her sister, man. You know, good luck to her, man. You know, Karan, so, I got two minutes. I want you to talk about how you always talk about local elections and we see what's going on in Texas, Florida, on how they're suppressing the local in those states, the, uh, the, the voter suppression that's going on in Georgia and all these states. In two minutes, what can people do to stop it? Or try to try to you know do something. So, um, what what can people do to stop it that doesn't seem as futile? Um, my biggest thing always is just really educate yourself about these about your local political infrastructure. As much as we want to focus on the presidency, a lot of people after uh, November. Yeah, needed a break from all the politics stuff. Uh, I think we can check our personal circles and recognize that people have checked out because we have a Democratic president. You know, uh, 45 is in an office. But across the country, there are state legislatures that are Republican and hyper-conservative. 
and, and this isn't a Republican and Democrat type thing, but because there's definitely Democrats that are extremely conservative. So they're hyper conservative and they looked at that last election and said, you know, we're really losing it right now. So on in a state like ours, they're trying to expand voter access, which is the Governor Cuomo signing. The exact opposite is happening in a lot of state legislatures across the country where they're trying to tighten it up. There's, a, there's two um, bills that the federal level could pass that would safeguard a lot of us. Um, so in 2013, the, um, the, the Voting Rights Act was gutted the, specifically the provision that made sure that any voting um, let piece of legislation had to get federal clearance. That's been gutted. There is a John Lewis mm -hmm. Act um, that essentially reverses that, that needs to pass. I think it's passed the House and needs to pass the Senate. That is something that people can do you know, get on the phone, call their cousins and all these other spaces and places to make sure that those elected officials pass that um, piece of legislation. There's also another one called the For the People Act, which is the most expansive one. It um, it, it, it extends uh, voter drop-off locations. It kind of repeals that voter ID stuff that's happening everywhere. Um, where they're trying to make everything more restrictive. I think that's what people can do just as a, a simple, you know, making a phone call uh, to their local elected official. But then also, like, I'm, I, I feel like I say this every time, get involved, you know, find an organization. You don't have to know it all. You don't got to be, you know, politically astute. You know, you got other things going on. I get that. Join an organization where you could trust their judgment and ride with them. And when they give you marching orders, you follow through with it. You know, mm -hmm. get involved in that level. And if, if you ain't got time for that, visit websites. You're on your phone anyway. You know, you're probably watching this on your phone. or, or your <laughs> Visit some websites and, and, and really just get connected to some something that you're passionate about. Yeah, just, don't, just don't get on your websites while you're watching Let's Chop It Up Time. <laughs> 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 like and subscribe us first. But no, listen, Brother Karan, thank you for always bringing us the good conversation. Thank you for always enlightening us and educating us and breaking it down very simple like we're in third or fourth grade. That's why I think this whole, you know, ranked choice voting was so confusing to people, but you broke it down very, very simple. And I hope people take the knowledge and information that Karan gave, gave us and go to the polls and vote. And like you always see my brother always talk about vote locally. It means the most to us. So with that said, brother, thank you. Hope you have a great Mother's Day with the you know, beautiful women in your life. And be safe and hug and kiss your son for all of us brothers over here. Let's chop it up, man. My man. Not a problem. Thank yeah, you. Always, sure, always having me on. I appreciate oh, come on. it. Oh, yeah. Come on. Also, what, what do you got going on? Anything running? You jogging? What are you doing? Bicycling? Um, the East New York, uh, you know, the farm, uh, the, you know, the stuff, the plants and all stuff. Come on. Talk about it real quick. Get it out. It, it is the growing <laughs> season. Uh, we just kicked off by doing this uh, district wide cleanup with a bunch of the gardens uh, for Earth Day. Um, that was the, the 24th. So our gardens are, are now starting to pick up. I haven't put anything in the ground because it keeps getting way too cold at night. Um, yeah. I'm not trying to deal with sad plants because I, I want to <laughs> be able to really reap. Um, so that's going on. Uh, I'm running the Chicago Marathon in the fall. So that starts that's what's in up. January. I'm, I'm January. June. Um, I'm really excited about that um, because I, I want to dedicate... Um, the, it, it to my grandmother um, and to my fraternity uh, brother who um, also passed away literally the day after my grandmother. My brother in Omega chapter, that's right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he, he passed from testicular cancer, my grandmother from um, liver, uh, bladder cancer. Uh, so, you know, just really taking the health and wellness tip, like, you know, a little bit more serious. Um, so my encouragement to everybody that I speak to, including y'all, is to take Take every necessary step to take care of yourselves. There's people that truly love and care about you and want to see you live long, fruitful lives. The only way you're going to live long, fruitful lives is by eating fruit, <laughs> vegetables, <laughs> and making sure that you're truly taking care of yourself uh, socially, emotionally, and having a, a full balance um, um, life. So if you're not involved in something physically, try to find an outlet 
Um, even if it's just, you know, hiking, walking, running, canoeing, swimming, something. Just do something. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Travel safe, man. If you're in Chicago, you're probably going to be running from the bullets. I know you're going to run fast. So with that said, <laughs> <laughs> don't let the vice laws get, them get on you, Karan. You've been a boogie ugly, baby. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> I think you'll be all right. The brothers love us out there, man. So peace, brother. Peace and have a good night, brother. My man. Be good, bro. Peace. I know I'm crazy, man. I know I'm crazy, man. <laughs> but yo, another great show. Let's chop it up, my brothers. Please like and subscribe. Follow us on YouTube. Twitter and Facebook. And remember, we will move into Wednesday nights starting the first week in June. And one last thing. Go ahead. The return of Rodney next week. Rod will be <laughs> That's right. <laughs> El Chapo Rodney O. <laughs> All right, brother. Peace, y'all.